everybody. <laughs> and she raises up her arm, but it's not to pull you into a hug. It's with a closed fist. <gasps> no more manipulation, no more trickery, no more extortion, no more harming anybody that seems to come into my life. It doesn't seem active, but it has a, an, a bit of illusory uh, sense that about it. Very good. And you, my friend, are the tippity top. <gasps> oh, no. Natural 20. <laughs> Hello, oh. everybody! Oh. Welcome back Stop. to Tabletop. Stop doing that! <laughs> oh. Welcome ah. to the special oh, Halloween terrible. edition of Brunk Hollow. Ah. Oh. Cursed. We hope you all had a wonderful week and that uh, more costume fun is to be had. Um, this year, <laughs> so I don't have to look at anyone. <laughs> uh. Man, and I thought the, uh, what was it, Jim Carrey one was horrifying? The, oh, the Grinch? The Grinch, yeah. I mean, that's pretty yeah, Jim Carrey. Is, that's yeah. definitely the Jim Carrey. It, it, but it, it's, ooh. As far as we know, that could be Jim Carrey. In <laughs> we have special <laughs> guest yes, Jim Carrey guest. tonight. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> Uh, I'm not dressed up as anything. I'm just, uh, I'm adding to the disturbing. Ooh. It's rough. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Clear plastic. Cursed. You mean this isn't a character <laughs> in some famous TV show? Ma'am. Wait, literally, <laughs> Matt is dressed as a condom. <laughs> oh, no, now I just I'm see a meeting. I'm dressed needed. for your protection. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, don't worry, like, it's only gonna so last for like that. two minutes before I, I'm suffocating. Take it off. <laughs> That's um, our mystery guest, however, will remain a mystery <laughs> the entire oh, three no. hours. No, no. No. Mystery guest, Mr. Carey. Oh Mr. Carey. <laughs> Yikes. Um, oh, brother. We're coming back yeah. in tonight with uh, chapter seven of Brunkalo. Yeah. Last week was a very lore-filled episode, uh, a lot of twists and turns, and we learned quite a bit about some of our characters and why they've come to town, or at least getting some hints as to why they might have come to town. Or haven't come to town. When we jump back in, we will be following each and everyone to their various destinations. Everyone's kind of split up in the morning to see to their business, and we'll make sure we check in on everybody to see what they're up to. Yep. Um, but before we do that, <laughs> we do a, oh, hey! Oh, 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 oh my god, it's Talon, uh, guys! We'll allow him to breathe, oh I suppose. Oh my god, <laughs> I no You look like you're dying. Oh my god. <laughs> it's <laughs> really hot. It's the fluff on your beard. Yeah. Oh yeah, I thought this plastic yeah, was gonna be hot. Yikes. Uh, <laughs> while we give Talon a breather, shall we uh, do, the, do the stuff? We shall. Uh, welcome to the Sunday Night Twitch stream. Thank you for joining us here. If you like to watch it or listen to it other ways, there's lots of different ways to enjoy it. Uh, you can listen to the podcast version, which comes out on Tuesdays, wherever you get podcasts. Uh, we just sp started Spotify subscriptions, which is a fun way to support the show, if, uh, if it please you. Yeah, um, you get you get access to the Notch, notch and Sodas. sodas. Mm -hmm. um, in Soon audio. after they happen. Why are you saying like that? I, I didn't know exactly how oh, soon. It's like two or three uh, days. Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. The Thursday after, after it occurs. After yes, pretty sure that's the schedule I made up. Uh, there's also some fun polls I know on Spotify. Uh, there's also ways to rate us, not on Spotify, but on other podcast forms. So if you listen there, give us a rate, please. Um, on Tuesdays, the YouTube VOD goes live right. for our patrons and our YouTube members, mm -hmm. uh, which is oh, more fun ways to support the show. Uh, otherwise, you have to wait until Friday to see the YouTube video. Those, those go live on Friday for everyone else. Um, we're on every social media platform you could possibly imagine, even the ones that you can't imagine. Except <laughs> Snapchat. Except Snapchat. Um, at, if you search at Tabletop Notch, you'll find uh, us there for silly, stupid things. <laughs> and uh, 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 behind the scenes stuff, I, we film stupid stuff. One yeah. of your things is broken. Did you it know that? It came that way. <laughs> oh, she's a, a broken exactly. little bee. That side of the table is cursed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Cursed yeah. with the good vibe. And uh, yeah. this yeah. side it's is just normal, like normal humans. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah, need to get out of this. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, 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 find us on uh, uh, social media. I'm kidding, but I'm suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> we love we love when you uh, like and comment and share all that yeah. silly stuff that we, we yes. put out every week. Um, so thank you. Finally, uh, join us in Discord for awesome 
conversations in between shows about the most recent show, about people are still, you know, checking in on older episodes when they're catching up. Um, there's homebrew stuff, your own homebrew stuff, Matt's, uh, all sorts of good stuff on there. So join us on Discord. Mm -hmm. We all hang out there during the week. Yeah. Um, so for Patreon, we just dropped for the top notch people uh, the Hero Forge mini designs and uh, the puzzle videos. And then in the coming couple of days, the last couple of days of ha uh, Halloween, of October, uh, we're going to be dropping our big notch little PDF custom yes. thing that we do, the homebrew mm, stuff. Yeah. Um, cool little trinkets uh, that are going to come out in the next couple of days. Like yeah. Mm. And the, so we just started doing YouTube members, and YouTube is saying that because we started it, we have until November 15th to get. A thousand dollars for starting one. So, but we have to get thirty. Oh, we have, so we have to get thirty YouTube members. Members. So even oh. if it's just for a month, I I've tried to read as many of the asterisk terms and conditions yeah. as I could, and there's I feel like I think it could possibly happen. So oh. let's get rich. So, oh. <laughs> really? Oh, I, I, I didn't know that was a thing. I can so I can a lot clear of plastic cans. Can oh, no. <laughs> By so many clear plastic That's cans. A lot think of, of the hats. I can barely hats. drink this. So <laughs> tight. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, wait. I thought you meant because it's hot. It's literally just hot. Oh, no. I can only lift my arm a certain <laughs> That's just because Matt's ripped. <laughs> this costume's about to be ripped. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll uh, call him A. We'll call him B. And then we have merch. Go ahead and check it out. It's super fun. Super yeah. cool stuff. And we're, in, yeah. we're working on a couple other things for the winter time. Um, some fun accessories for that. So go ahead and check it out. It's super silly. Please. Good stuff. Um, I don't want to waste any more time because I think no. Matt is going to melt into a puddle. I'll make so it. So hold on one second while I pull up who to thank because the people are being wonderful people. Yeah. Hold on a second. Can you help me out? Yeah. 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 No, I got it. It's working. It's okay. There's research. no fixing it. No. Okay. There's Low Brass Guy resubscribed. <laughs> half Baked gifted a sub. Finny Can resubscribed. Golden Dagger did 10,000. Er, 1,050 bits. Thank oh, you so so awesome. Much. That was awesome. amazing, I'm sorry. Nerfmaster09 resubscribed, half baked gifted a sub, and then another sub. Nerfmaster gave out five community subs. Earthmage resubscribed. Trash Possum21 resubscribed. Dude, they resubscribed. Uh, Wizrunning uh, gave out a community sub. Alpha gave out two community subs. Sensuous Bean gave out five community subs. 22 is resubscribed. Geese Stand resubscribed, half baked gifted a sub. Wizrunning gave a thousand subs. Jared WK resubscribed. Dave the One gave out five community subs. Pool Shaven did 500 bits. Solitaire resubscribed. Low Breast Guy did a thousand bits. Also, shout out to uh, Dude and Pokodoko, who are timestamp and mods. Um, My favorite are people. <laughs> our um, people building the fandom that are doing such an excellent job. Oh Chapter 6 is fandom looks so good, guys. Yeah. It's got like yeah. sexy little quotes from yeah. us. It's and, like, like, here's a quote, quote to help it's you. It's so cool. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then Whirling Nerdish has been sending me the caption, the closed captions for our YouTube videos. Which is. With, yeah, oh my yeah. god, I can't. So, help. so thank you to all of the people in the community that, that are uh, helping and, and the boosters. You're in our uh, yeah. little thank you, welcome videos awesome. now. So thank you all so very much. For <laughs> Everything's down to a science. I send all the like proper nouns and the spellings and you forward them and they get them in there. And oh, it's, it's great. They're doing Phantom is awesome. Awesome <laughs> work. Um, so thank you all so, so very much. Oh, and, and enjoy the new emotes in the Twitch chat. Oh, so yes. Oh. Yes, there's a... Which the there's two? a Talon mind ta blown. The Talon mind blown. Oh, you're just sassy. Yes. And then there's a jack o' lantern and a skull from home. Ah, oh, yay. Yes. And if you're on the dis, yeah, they're nice and big on the Discord too. You can do they like the big, big versions the of them. Yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that should be like a subscriber thing that you could make you like can, big like, ass <laughs> emotes. <laughs> that would be sweet. That would be cool. No, instead we just get stories. And what's the thing that died? The moment. Moment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In and out, man. Moment. No. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry about it. It's already gone. It's so there's nothing Great. Um, but yeah, I think I'm all set. <laughs> okay. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, we're going to do the usual thing. We're going to throw it over to the recap, then the intro, and then we will dive in to chapter seven. Noise. Broncolo. Wow, seven episodes already. Everything's coming up seven. So. Wow. Here we go, everybody. Let's Here we do go. the thing. Wee. <laughs> mm. Previously, on Chapter 6, Night Falls, Tempers Rise, Morna was first to return to camp, which gave her the opportunity to catch up with Skits, who had no new information about the earlier meeting, but gave her a lead in tracking down a man named Haskell Pips. The rest of the group passed by a boorish bard before learning more about the fossil forge and goblins, who above all else desired secrecy should their mind prove out. Before turning in for the night, Doxley and TZ paid visits to the lucky heathen in the Murk Hall, though neither got exactly what they were looking for as their inquiries were rebuffed. With this 
his foot firmly in his mouth after talking to Maeve Crittenden, Ilian followed the lead of Kate and Morna and returned to Paramount Lodgings, and in the morning shared a tense conversation with his sister over what they'd come here to accomplish. Doxley then escorted Gujek Claiborne to the courier's office, where, much to her chagrin, town fixer Izzy Narvos preferred a private discussion. Does TC need to pick a side to make any headway in his clandestine efforts? And will Kate be inconsolable if someone makes friends with Maeve before she does? Stick around and find out on Chapter 7 of Broncolor. For Kate, the walk to the Merc Hall is mostly already familiar. For Maeve's mill house is situated just west of the bridge over the creek. And with no signs of blue smoke pouring forth from the window, you wouldn't be surprised if she hadn't yet risen from her trance to start the day, despite being, like you, of full elven blood. To your left, a small covered stall by the river is in the process of being set up as a convenient place to fish without the sun beating down on you and several early risers smile or tip their hats as they work on affixing the horsehair fishing lines to the poles. You can actually see that on your map just over the bridge there past the past Maves. There's right on the corner where those two rivers meet. You can see that little covered area. It's sort of partially covered by the Broncolo title. Got it. There's a stone arch entryway, and it takes you into the courtyard of the largest building on the south bank, where you can start to hear some kind of quiet, echoey conversations. Seated at a few long mess hall style tables are some of the likely employees, men and women with varying armaments by their side, swords, spears, chest plates. They eat breakfast or rub the slumber from their eyes as clearly everybody's sort of just getting situated here in the morning. In the back behind a metal lattice to prevent entry, an elven woman kind of winces and grabs at her lower back her face one that you recognize, though her hair is longer, and an infusion of time and very likely adversity has hardened the expression on her face. As she adjusts her headband, you see wrist wraps with the orange and gold colors of Sewol. And after lowering her hands, she finally happens to look up, and she makes eye contact from across the room. She says something to the person next to her in the cage and then uses a key to open the cage and steps out. With a couple of long strides, she glides across the courtyard, smiling, picking up a little bit of speed like a dog when an owner returns home after a long day. And she raises up her arm, but it's not to pull you into a hug. It's with a closed fist. <gasps> and she brings it down in an overhand right directly toward your face. Holy. I knew we were going to have to fight some stuff. Say Wee. 16 to hit. Fail. She misses with the with the overhand right. And she's going to use a key point. <gasps> Shut up. And make two more unarmed strikes. No oh, way. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> what have you done? A natural one and a 15 to hit. <laughs> And bobbing and weaving out of the way, Kate dodges a couple more attacks there. She waits one moment. Is there anything that you do? Can I can I throw a right hook? You may. Give me an attack roll. <laughs> oh my god. Let's go. 
Ten. Ten. That will miss. <laughs> Swings over the top of her head. She goes in for another strike. An uppercut from underneath. <laughs> uh, that's an eleven to hit. No. <laughs> Key point. <laughs> goes for an elbow and then another Yo. <laughs> uh, Seventeen to hit. No. Four to hit. No. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. And at this point, a couple of sort of throws have been exchanged, and people around are sort of getting up out of their seats. People are grabbing weapons. People aren't quite sure what to make of it. And the person you notice kind of over her shoulder, the person that she spoke to in the cage, sort of looks over at the crowd and sort of <sighs> motions to them not to intervene. So she's gonna get ready for another attack. Is there anything else you do? Um, yeah, can I go for a kick in the stomach? Okay, give me <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was bad. Twelve. Twelve. Yeah. You miss. She, oh my God. she steps back and the <laughs> foot just kind of goes up under her chin. She takes two steps back and she stomps on the lip of like no. a metal bowl that goes up in the air and then she kicks it at you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Wait, is she uh, Fifteen to hit. No. Fifteen misses. The, you duck and the bowl. Someone on the other table is like, oh, they get hit by kind of the metal bowl as it goes flying. And she's going to use a key point and make two more attacks. Oh my here. God. Oh my God. Uh, he's not going to do it. Ten to hit. No. Fifteen to hit. Backflip. <laughs> Backflip. <laughs> she backflips, gets up onto one of the tables. It's yeah. your turn. What would you like to do? I'm up on a table. Am I on a table? Yes, She's on the table. You're up on the table. I'm going to jump and try to like land on top of her, Give you know, like wrap my hand. You need an arm strike? Okay, okay. Wrap your what? <laughs> <laughs> 25. That will hit. Wow. Damage there. there we go. So it's just an arm strike. Damage, 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 damage. Oh, <laughs> forget that. Eight. Oh, no, six, six, six. Six damage there. Oh my god. What? Oh, wow. What are we doing? Oh no, this is crazy. What's happening? <laughs> Finally, one of the one of the attacks connects, and immediately you're not looking to the sides, but you can hear kind of a ooh <laughs> coming from around this sort yeah. of courtyard area with all the people sitting. Get her. She recovers very quickly, shoves you, and then kind of goes for like a quick one, two, three in the stomach <laughs> there. Uh, the attack. Land it, land it. 17 to hit. No. And then two follow up unarmed strikes. 11 to hit, 14 to hit. Oh my god. <laughs> what did I do? What did I do? And now the two of you are both up on the tables and they're these long sort of banquet style tables. So it's almost like like a fencing match. Like she moves forward and you move back, you move forward yeah. and she moves back. And there's a couple of those. It's your turn again. <laughs> Okay, Damn down it, on the ground. I'm gonna um like squat down and try to like sweep my leg and knock her off Go her ahead. feet. Okay, okay. Oh, 24. Go ahead and roll for 10. Oh. Yes. Get her. Bring in the pain. It's <laughs> a six. Six damage? Yeah. Great. Sweep the leg. <laughs> she falls down, <laughs> hits the bottom. And so now you're standing upright and she's yeah. like looking up at you. She grabs one of those metal bowls, <laughs> flings it up at yes! you. Yes! Is she a turn for roller? I want that. I want to do it. 19 to hit. Dang it. Oh. I, you just oh. made an unarmed strike, which I think makes her AC 20, yes. yeah. not 18. Oh, it's so true. So actually Any misses. Any unarmed strike? As long drop? as she makes an unarmed strike, oh her AC God. goes up by two. So Broke. this time it doesn't miss. Yes, but as the bowl comes towards you, you just bang, bat it out of the way yes. and it goes across the room. And she's going to make uh, two more unarmed strikes okay. for kicking from down yeah, below. Yeah, the ground. Uh, these are with disadvantage because she's prone. Uh, 12 to hit. No. Uh, 15 to hit. Oh my she goodness. kicks, tries to kick again. Oh you jump God. over both Let's of them. What do you do? Um, can I like come down and like kind of kneel, um, one knee on the stomach and like my elbow on her neck? Yes. Uh, so is this like a grapple? Yeah. To, give me a contested, give me an athletics check. Contested by her acrobatics. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Oh, athletics. Oh, athletics. <laughs> oh, athletics. <laughs> 13. 17. 13. So you go oh down no. and she yeah. tries to roll away, but you grab her by the shoulder and put her back on the table. And you kind of have her pinned there. And as she's kind of looking up at you, she brings a hand up, but this time instead of a punch, she brings it to her mouth and <laughs> sort of whistles. Uh -huh. And the whole place kind of stops. And there was a lot of kind of cheering and sort of oh, oh, like people. And immediately the whole place oh, <laughs> kind of goes quiet there. And she breathes heavy. You can see sort of the... <sighs> Can't buy that kind of training in Brunk Hollow, boys. <sighs> Glory Kate Maury. <laughs> Didn't expect to see you coming through the cusp. If you're looking for a job here, you're hired. <laughs> oh, he's so cold. <laughs> you 
idiot. Most of these limp dicks couldn't hit a bugbear with a boat paddle. <laughs> and she sort of pushes you back a little bit. Always most sad. Have a seat. Back to your business, boys. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out the stool and just kind of dust myself off a little bit. You sit across her, like on this sort of long yeah. style table. She grabs a sort of clump of rags that's kind of off to her left and she holds it up to her nose there that's sort of bleeding a little bit. Just make sure that she stems the flow. <sighs> really though, what are you doing here? Did the glory girl finally break bad? And that nickname to you, sort of glory, Kate Mori, or just glory, is a nickname that you got at the the sort of place where you trained, where you trained as a fighter. And you got that as kind of being, not even in a derisive way, like an A plus student. You were always on time, you were early, you never left early, you were never a problem. Like, so some of the kids that were all, all there and sort of, you know, they, they called you that as a court of yeah. sort of lighthearted making fun of, that you weren't sort of. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, they, they didn't like hate you, they just, you know, that was a lighthearted nickname that I had. Uh -huh. I'm gonna kind of look down at the uh, wristbands mm -hmm. and just nod towards them and just say, um, it's a lot of pride for the city. <sighs> Wasn't sure you'd still have that. Well, it's cheaper than getting new ones. How long have you been here now? <sighs> Six months. I just got here yesterday. I would have noticed if you were here before then. <laughs> <laughs> so, what kind of operation are you running here exactly? Welcome to the Merc Hall. People need things done, can't do it for themselves. They come here to do it. <clears throat> Daphne, um, I have a lot of questions for you. Is this a relatively private spot? She kind of looks to her left and her right. There's no one kind of off to the right. Left, like three seats down, there's someone there who's like sort of eating breakfast, has a weapon by uh -huh. his side. She's sort of, hey, scoot down. And he, Mm -mm. <laughs> and she sort of gives him a look. Picks up his stuff, and he kind of moves like a little further down. So now, you know, the room has people in it, but you have yeah. a little bit of space around you to have a, a private discussion. Uh -huh. Poor boy. <sighs> Sad vampire. I have to assume this mysterious town meeting everyone's been talking about, you were there? You learn a lot in one day. It was a long day. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell me what brings you to town, and I'll tell you what this town can do for you. <gasps> Big inhale. <laughs> kind of like look around, little lean in. Alchemy. Well, there's some of that here. There's I take it there's more where that came from, given the strength of your inhale. Just a lot of questions. You know, there's only so much I can learn in books, especially where we're from. Of course. Merc Hall's got none of that alchemy, sorry to say. It's all sword and board here. Hmm. You try Sawbones already, Blaylock? I've talked to Mr. Sawbones. I've talked to <laughs> Madam... Maeve. <laughs> Hope you didn't call her that. Oh uh, no, uh, but I might as well have. It didn't go so well. Yeah, she's not gonna do you any favors out of kindness. Yeah, so I've noticed. But honestly, you know, I've only been here less than 24 hours. I'm wondering how different it is here really than everywhere else. What kind of power systems are at play exactly? There's people who have a foothold in here. You heard to God talk less, that's for sure. <laughs> Some people scared to mention it. Some people take offense from the word. Doesn't mean too much to me. I came here to start over. I have. I wouldn't call myself one of the major movers and shakers of Bronk Hollow, but I've made my way. And what about those major movers and shakers? Mm -hmm. Are there some you would be inclined to trust more than others? Oh. <laughs> if I say no, is that just too general? I would love some specifics. <laughs> what names have you heard? Oh. 
Mr. Bison. That's a big one. Um, Izzy. Yeah. Bison honorable enough, if mining's your trade. A lot of people have tried to set up their own independent operations. Sometimes he moves in on those. If you're setting up your own shop, I'd do so quietly and mind your business. If you're looking to work with him, he takes on new people all the time. And from what I understand, he pays well. He doesn't like competition, he'd prefer to buy it out. Mm. That being said, there are people in town who would prefer he had less influence over Broncala, but he got here as early as anyone. So a lot of the plots are owned by him and the ones that aren't, he at least has a say in who gets it and who doesn't. Wait. Not many people that could call a town meeting and have most people show up, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that much I gathered. How much does he not like competition? Is he inclined to... violence? Alchemical competition I wouldn't be too worried about. <laughs> no. I met some folks on the way in yesterday. All right. We got, took care of a couple of jobs, saw some shady stuff in the mountains. Now I know this isn't the cleanest, squeakiest place, but I just want to make sure I'm not crossing any wrong lines and if there's anything shady going around that I keep my eye on it. You did a job for Bison. Yes. Hmm. Nothing wrong with that, but before you do another one for him, I would take a good, long, hard think about who you want to throw your hat in with. Because once you're one of Bison's, you're one of Bison's, and that's it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So you would not consider yourself one of Bison's then? Merc Hall likes to think that it operates independently. We even do jobs for the prison, which makes us no friends here in Broncala. But if they got work, we got people that can do it. <laughs> and what about the goblin community here? Yeah, the goblins. Goblins ain't my area of expertise. I know they come to some arrangement to be allowed to stay here, but I don't trust them, not for a minute. Don't know why you would either come from where we do. Goblins and Saywall, I don't have the best reputation. I just don't like seeing anybody get picked on. Well, that sounds about right for you. <laughs> Inhale. <laughs> I don't like goblins, I don't hire them, and I don't accept them from contracts. People want to pretend they ain't always up to something that's on them, but it ain't how I do things. You ever run into any trouble with the cusp? I don't want to venture out into the cusp all that much. It's people who I know get paid to try and push the boundary, see where and when they might be able to set something up without drawing the ire of the gods, but it's an imperfect science. You could do something one day, and then return there the next, and find that a cleric's waiting for you. Again, not my area of expertise. If there's a beast that needs killing, or if there's a cave that needs clearing, that's under our purview. Anyone else in town powerful or powerless you'd recommend I steer clear from? I'd steer clear from making Izzy angry. Izzy? I mean, I got jobs if you want them. <laughs> Most of it's housekeeping shit. Nest that needs clearing, pack of dire wolves that won't stop nipping at the merchant caravans that come in and out. Is that the kind of glamorous lifestyle that brings you to town? You know, fighting while fun, it's not my favorite pastime, hmm. but- I wouldn't know it from training with you. <laughs> I do have room and board to take care of, so. Got anything going on today? She reaches into her pocket. She takes kind of a crumpled piece of paper out. Oh. Oh. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. Whatever you like. This is a full list, Daphne. It's, Whoa. it's three things. They just notarized. Oh. <laughs> Detailed. I like the way you run things. Now you're asking about Bison and Izzy, but then you say your primary interest is in alchemy and neither of them have anything to do with that. 
I'm interested in being here for a while. Hmm. I have my personal pursuits, but if there are things I can take care of, ways I can help make this place as far and as different as the place we came from, while I'm here, that's what I want to do. Hmm. Maybe I had an idealized vision of what Broncala would be like. And I would like to help bring that into reality. What do you think so far? It's nice. <laughs> sure. It's beautiful. That is true. Nothing like home. People are shady, though. That's true. These, um, <clears throat> aquatic trolls at Shattershake Falls. Yeah? Seven plus person job? That's right. What if I can bring four folks with me? I would say that's a good start and get at least two more. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Full day job. What time should I get back here with six people? There's no time limit on it. That one's been there for a while. As you can imagine, not a lot of people jumping at the chance to fight aquatic trolls. Sounds like it could be fun. Could be. Would you come with us? I would not. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> if I die, this place goes to shit. I mean, I'd have to put Jalen in charge, and he's stupid, so. <laughs> Jalen? Yeah. She jerks her head over toward the cage, where there's another sort of elf sort of sorting some things. <laughs> he sees the two of you look over and... Uh, uh, he uh, seems nice. He is nice. Which is better than some of these folks are. How many of these people working for you know where you come from? I don't hide the fact I'm from Saywall, if that's what you're asking. Do they know why you left? No. <gasps> I'm not sure I do either, to be honest. Not sure I ever told you. You're dodging my questions, Glory. You come here looking for alchemy. What you done so far? You said you talked to Maeve, you said you talked to Blaylock. That's about it. Nothing on either of them, huh? Not much, I mean, <clears throat> Blaylock's around, you know. I said maybe I could do some work with him if he'd teach me a few things, but he seemed a bit scatterbrained. I'm not sure his line of knowledge is exactly what I'm looking for, but at this point, I'm <laughs> open to anything. Hmm. She thinks for a moment. She kind of, again, sort of looks left and right, just make sure that, you know, you're having a quiet discussion to yourself, which you are for mm -hmm. the most part. I know there's um, ingredients for alchemy that Maeve sometimes has a hard time locating. A while back, she had us put up a flyer for anyone willing to track down some substances that I guess you can find out in the downwheel. I can try and locate that flyer if you're hoping to endear yourself. Daphne, I would massively appreciate that. Might take me a while. Dig it out of our records room. Never really was one for organization. Where can I find you if the list turns up? I'm over at Paramount. Fine. Beyond the basics, you know, healing potions and so forth, magic mostly still has a stink about it. Mm. People are terrified to be the one who breaks the dam. Nothing draws attention quite like the arcane. They're worried what might happen here? That the Pe gods might still be able to see them? People always worried in Broncala whether they show it or not. That's Cross fair. some imaginary line and people say the gods can't see you. How long would you say it takes you before you feel safe? More than a year, I'd think. And Broncalo ain't that old. I'm looking forward to getting close to that line. Hmm. Now, this meeting. I'm gonna lean in as close as I possibly can. Anything you want to tell me about it? Literally anything. That depends, Glory. You planning on doing some extended work for the Merc Hall? Oh. I am down to tussle with some aquatic trolls. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> let's go! Come on, you let's go! Tell me anything. <laughs> oh no! Five. Well, 
When you bring me the head of one of those aquatic trolls, maybe we talk. <laughs> I'm gonna put my hand out. <laughs> oh. Bigger spit glob than <laughs> she did. The biggest spit glob possible. <laughs> Always gotta be the best, huh, Glory? Just the way I was raised, I guess. So what else, what else? I assume you came in on the Mackland wagons. Yes, it was um, a bit of a shit show, I would say. (laughs) People hear when a cleric's in the cusp. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect anything easy. But I thought I might be able to talk my way out of it. Turns out some of the people I was traveling with were uh, a lot more excited to get their fists dirty than I was. I mean, we had kids traveling with us. We lost a whole wagon. I think that could have been avoided. It's possible. Cleric. Your interest in alchemy wasn't there for you, was it? To be honest, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> she believes you when you say that. <laughs> Your incredulousness reached her. <laughs> I would love to imagine myself to be that important to draw that kind of attention, but. Important got nothing to do with it when it comes to the clerics. Drink. It's a little early. Is it? <laughs> Drink one. Yeah, why not? <laughs> so. Not many people know this, but uh, your carriage man, Baker, and I go back a ways. He was a smuggler skirting just beneath the promulgation line. And for a few years, I acted as a fence for him in Saywall. Baker mostly plays it legitimate now. He did some time and he ain't looking to do more. But if you recall a number of my unexcused absences from the monastery, I was working for Baker. That is wild. What a small world. His knowledge of the hills means there's plenty to be made bringing flea bags to Brunk Hollow. And our past working relationship means I get a little advance notice of who's coming. If I hear of anyone that might fit your needs for this alchemical pursuits, I can let you know that too. Daphne, it is nice to have an old friend in town. Sure. Why don't you do your old friend a favor and tell me a little bit about these people that you were fighting with? Out in the hills are the ones who I came in with. Are those different people? Nope. uh, (laughs) Same tight crew, I suppose, I've assembled for myself in the past 24 hours. Um, Couple of sea elves, shady, love to get their fists dirty. I really don't know why they're here, but it definitely seems like they're chasing some kind of glory. Right. That's what you want to talk about. Um, a stonemason. Real shifty. Really haven't cracked her yet. Don't know what her deal is. Absolutely no clue. But she loves rocks, and I feel like she's got a good heart. And a strange man who smells like flowers that had been bought and then left to rot on a table for days and days. And what's your impression of Mr. Welker? Mr. Have you already spoken with him? (laughs) You know, in a pinch, he's definitely protected um, the group. You know, he's not selfish, I would say. but I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> On principle, really. Hmm. Is that the impression you got? I don't know yet. Did he come looking for work? Yeah. Not this kind of work, though. Something else. Should I be scared? No. Do you want to elaborate? No. Do you want me to keep a close eye on him and 
write him a recommendation letter? You can save the letter. But yeah, I would. I ought to let you know. I mean, I was going to ask him if he wanted to come on this uh, aquatic troll job. Well, you can take him to fight trolls. That means nothing to me. All right. I'll take him. Oh, if he's interested, I'll watch him. Maybe ask some probing questions. Good luck. The best advice I can give you is to not rush into things. You come in too hot in Brunk Hollow, it's natural for people to be suspicious. You might have run into some of that already. Yeah. I'm not so good at being mysterious. Mm. Not like you. <laughs> not like me. Why is it that you left? Make a persuasion check. Oh, come on. This is it. This is it. This is it. You can do it. <gasps> Poopy. <laughs> Natural one. Something about her. <laughs> I will lump that in to our previously agreed upon spit handshake. You bring me the troll, we'll talk longer. I'll take you out to dinner. Sounds good. Mm. All right. Well, I better go start assembling my crew then. I know why I left. But you? Good student, good family, good living. What the fuck are you doing in Broncala Glory? Don't say alchemy to me. Oh. There comes a time when everybody has to leave the place they grew up in. I'm sure you can understand that. That only holds true to the people who grew up in shit. <laughs> Maybe I'm just looking for more. And I'm gonna take the note and I'm gonna fold it up, put it in my pocket and just kind of stand up, <laughs> gently, quietly push the stool in and say, it really is so nice seeing you. Good to see you too, Glory. Don't be a stranger. Oh, I'll, I'll see be if, back soon. I'll see if I can dig up that flyer that Maeve gave us a while back. Yeah, and any secrets you're holding on to, you dig those up too. I'll get a show. <sighs> I'm gonna tip my hat. <laughs> the guy in the cage sort of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and head out. Head back on out. Probably back towards Paramount. Sure. You le but you head out um, past the uh, the sort of stone arch that sort of is the gateway yeah. into the courtyard. There, you sort of step out. A little moment to yourself here is the sort of rivers in front of you. you. Look to your right, you see the fishermen continuing to sort of set up their rods and stuff. So you can see sort of this moment here alone after. Uh... Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna walk over to the water. Okay. Yeah. You're close enough. Also, um, it's on the other side, and you know, but you can hear the sound of the water mill. Just yeah. Like... Can I sit down at the bank of the river? You can. Yeah. Um, sort of by myself, just cross-legged, um, sit up nice and tall, and using my training, just kind of like something maybe I haven't thought about in a long time, take a seat and like meditate. Okay. Like not in a not in a elf way, but in like a... <laughs> <laughs> not in a sleepy elf way, but yeah. in a, an awake <laughs> in like monk a, way. I'm in an awakened <laughs> monk way, yeah. Yes. I'm gonna kind of like settle my thoughts and try to absorb everything. Yeah, you just take a quiet moment there. You can feel the wind kind of blows and there's these reeds kind of by the side and every once in a while the wind blows a little heavier and you can feel the reeds just kind of tickling your face mm -hmm. kind of back and forth, but you just mm -hmm. kind of center yourself there. Mm -hmm. side. And slowly kind of open my eyes and just like look around, feel the reeds and be like, it really is beautiful here. And as Kate takes a moment to herself, we're gonna head on over to Narvo C and C. When you step outside, you're forced to kind of crane your neck around the bronze owlbear statue to get a look at that alleyway that runs between Narvo C and C and the building next door. The building next door, uh, sorry, the, the, the passage itself is very narrow, but it is walkable. It doesn't look like you'd have to like shimmy. It just looks like, you know, it would be, it's a tight, it's between the two buildings. And on the left, that building on the opposite side, looks like there's stables 
and they're likely housing the maybe half dozen or so horses that are utilized by Izzy's couriers. You know, she sends couriers to various places. Okay. If there is a window in this alleyway that you could peer through to keep an eye on Gujek, you would have to sort of go around the corner to do so through that little alley. And with the morning thoroughfare being slightly less rambunctious at this hour, you rose early as an elf, you don't get the sense that anyone would stop you if you kind of meandered in that direction. It doesn't seem kind of nefarious in any way. Assuming, of course, that Micah doesn't make a move himself. And with a subtle glance over your shoulder, you can see that the reticent halfling has yet to rise from his position. But he makes no secret of his unrelenting stare. He's sort of staring up at you, and you can see his hand that has disappeared into the drawer next to him. And while it's possible that he's blinked in the time that you've been inside, you wouldn't bet any money on it. So he sort of stares from the... And again, you're looking just sort of over your shoulder to, see, to sort of clock his position, but you're standing at the entrance to Narvo CNC, watching a couple people go by, and then the alleyway's there on your right. Without even, like, turning to really look at him, like, you'll see her body language, like, kind of change, like, just slightly gets a little bit bigger, like oxygen is just filling up every part of her body. Her ear twitches a little bit when she hears someone behind her that she doesn't like. <laughs> and she'll, again, not looking, just a little over her shoulder. You don't want to be opening your drawer at me, pal. Shut it. And let me do my job. hear the sound of a door of a drawer closing well when I spill your blood on the floor I hope Izzy will understand and I'm gonna start trying to walk out the building nothing stops you from walking you take a step out into the third bit. Yeah, I'm gonna walk and turn the corner turn the corner and head the toward air. the window <sighs> looking down the alley as you get to the sort of threshold of it there's a straight path to the back. It's very straight. Mm -hmm. And you can see past a few kind of solitary trees where there is a myriad of painted tents with their diminutive inhabitants scuttling about. It's clearly where the bulk of the goblin population has made their home. And if you guys, again, sort of look at your maps, that that uh, number three on the map uh, is the goblin tents. I think you guys had already mm -hmm. alerted that. But yes, the goblin mm -hmm. tents, they're behind. It strikes you as odd that an influential figure such as Izzy would tolerate such a close proximity to creatures with a reputation of theft and vandalism. Hmm. And you sort of let that bounce around in your head. You're not sure if maybe she's affiliated with them in some way or if she feels her presence is felt so much that they wouldn't dare, you know, so, but it, that strikes you as odd. Like normally, especially in places that you've been, if you live next to where the goblins live, that's like the shitty part of town. That's like well, a, that property value. Down. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know it's like slums basically if, if you're living near the goblin. So that strikes you as odd. Halfway through the alley, you can see the window that likely looks into Izzy's office. It's the only window on this side of the building. And as you work your way just a couple of steps closer, a small shadow crops up behind you. You look behind you, and the shadow belongs to Micah who now stands at the edge of the thoroughfare. So he's probably, you know, 20, 25 feet behind you. And he has a hand crossbow down by his side. It's not up, but he has it down by his side. And you get the sense that he's waiting for an excuse to use it. Oh, Give me a perception check also. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh! <laughs> 16. 16. Toxie's like, ooh! <laughs> oh, <yeah! laughs> Sorry. I remember you! <laughs> Even with a quick glance back, it's enough with the light of the sort of early day and thoroughfare coming in, it's enough to see that the crossbow, something drips off of it. Like he's holding it by his side and there's like a little loser. Something drips <laughs> off of the tip of the crossbow bolt. <laughs> Some kind of substance. Presumably a poison of some kind, but yes, there's the, the 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 weapon is tipped with some sort of substance, so that's what you see. And how far am I um, from the window at this point? Six feet. And how far is he? Like twenty feet behind you. 20, 20, 25 feet behind. You. Okay. Okay. <sighs> Doxley's gonna slowly. Back. Oh, 
javelin and javelin. Twirl it on her fingers for a minute. <laughs> as best you can in this tight corridor. Oh, is it that tight? <laughs> yes, oh, it's shit. barely wider than your shoulder. Oh, oh yeah. I it's, it's a very <laughs> tight corridor. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Um, it's wide enough for you to take it out, but yeah, you couldn't even hold your javelin like like perpendicular to you. It's that narrow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Doxley's gonna have like a little, almost like a little sneer across her face. And she'll say, I don't know if you've heard the stories, but me and my crew are the ones that arrived yesterday. And not only did we almost beat Tom Harden alive, dead, we chased off a cleric. So I'll have you rethink what you're about to do and let me peer through this fucking Make an intimidation check. <laughs> come on, baby, come on! Okay. Intimidation. Yes. Fifteen. Fifteen. Doesn't make a move. Not turning her back on him. Doxy's gonna, step by step, approach the window. Another step. <laughs> Another step. And paying close attention to if she ever gets out of range with her javelin, if she ever starts feeling like he's too far. As you step backward, with each step you take backwards, it takes one little step forward. <laughs> oh my god. A couple steps forward and he's now no longer in the thoroughfare. He started, you know, back out like a couple steps in the thoroughfare. Now the two of you are both very much in this little alley. Oh my here. god. Take another step. Mm-hmm. Do so. He takes another step forward. You're probably close enough now. I mean, you're looking at him, but you're close enough now that if you turn, you can probably look through the window. And is the window like at my eye level or do I have to kind of hoist up a little? You don't have to hoist it? up. It's It starts at about shoulder height, so then it goes up. So you could peer up through the window. And you're about four and a half feet tall, so. <laughs> <laughs> and from my peripheral, am I able to tell if the window is like covered or obscured in any way? Um, I would say on your approach, even before you notice Micah, there's no curtain or anything. It's, okay. it's, it's not open, but it, the, it's, there's nothing obstructing the view. There. Okay. Doxley's going to keep maybe taking maybe one or two steps back mm-hmm. so that in her peripheral, she can see the entirety of the window and have her eyes dead on this guy. With each step you take, he mirrors your movements, takes another step forward. So the, the, the distance between the two views remained about 20 feet this entire time. Okay. You know, I think under other circumstances, I could be pals. And she'll take that moment to peer into the window. Give me a perception check. You can definitely see into it, but we can okay. perception check. Perception. 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 Ten. Ten. Okay. As you take a quick look inside, you can see Izzy's office. Large desk in the middle. You see Izzy seated, Gujek on the opposite side of the table. They seem to be having a conversation, and it seems cordial. Nobody's yelling at each other. There's no sort of sense of animosity between them. But it also seems transactional. They're not laughing or throwing back drinks or anything. It's business-like. The whole sort of demeanor between them. Okay. They seem to be negotiating some kind of arrangement. You watch um, Gujek take a couple bottles out of his briefcase and kind of put them on the table. What do they look like? Give me an Arcana check. Oh, come on, <laughs> man. Arcana check. Arcana. <laughs> Where Rip you Orba. Got it? Rip Orba. Oh, <laughs> Rip. 11. 11? Mm. Not garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Could add a negative one. You don't recognize them. However, you seem to recall that someone trying to move some product that looked very similar to these. Uh, happened at some point back home. And as you recall, your brother, who did a little more of the work on the docks, mm-hmm. might have a better idea if you were able to relay to him a description of these. But it okay. doesn't immediately, you, like you know it looks familiar, but you don't know exactly what it is. But you, you sort of try and think in your mind, try to burn that image into your mind and try and 
you think to yourself, like, Ilya yeah, might am, remember. Yeah, what this is. Doxley's like, as best she can, just repeating over and over the colors, the shapes of the bottle, the yep. shine, the viscous, like, just, viscosity. So as, after he takes out those bottles, you see a little back and forth between them. You can see... And you see Gujek in his sort of characteristically stiff demeanor, sort of... Lighting the mood a little bit, Doxley will turn her eyes away from the window for a moment and look to Micah. Seems like they're getting along. Would you care to watch with me, friends? <laughs> or shall I just watch alone? <laughs> cool. And I'm gonna look one more. I'm just gonna watch. Discussions between. Eyes darting back and forth, keeping an eye. Has he approached any closer? Is no. He as soon there? as you stop taking steps, he stopped taking steps forward. Great. Yeah, Doxley will even like slowly relax her like clenched hand around the javelin and just kind of sit and watch her client. Okay. A little bit of time goes by. Right. Gonna go over to the opposite end of town. <laughs> Heading back to Maeve's. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is scarier. Takes you right past excavation on demand. This is buffoon music. Which is uncharacteristically quiet at this hour, but it does still have a few sentries posted around the exterior to make sure nobody kind of slips into the storage bay there. You don't see Delia, but at least four other well-armed sentries are just kind of casually strolling up and down the thoroughfare, sort of very alert even at this early hour. And you can tell, you know, they're not looking for trouble. They just are, they pace in front of the building. They kind of come back. A couple times they'll kind of tip their hats at people that are going to and from, people that they recognize. They don't to you because you don't know them, but you see that. You're more accustomed to mornings by the bay. But the mountain air has a different brand of freshness that feels kind of bracing, but in a good way. The last time you headed this way, you made a startling discovery about one of your traveling companions, that Kate may be in possession of knowledge long buried that she, at least initially, believed a local alchemist could help her manifest that knowledge. And so you've returned in the hopes of fostering the very beginnings of a business relationship that could lead to bigger things. So a little bit of walking here through the thoroughfare. You have a moment to yourself. Um, just so I know on the map, um, as I approach Maves, um, there's that bridge, right? Right there. Uh, yes. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Let me actually. Uh, I always forget to bring up the map. You can talk. Sorry. Yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> um, I guess first I want to make a note to see if I see any blue smoke or Mave in the window at all. Give me a perception. Okay. Very briefly, once again, just because we're talking about just because we're talking about it. There we go. Seventeen on perception. Seventeen, great. So, uh, Ilian is making his way sort of down the thoroughfare here from Paramount Lodgings in the direction of Maze. With a seventeen, you look at the first thing you do is look at the same window that you saw before, where the blue smoke was sort of billowing forth, and you see no such smoke. And the lack of these colorful clouds that have become a little bit of a trademark of hers, the, your first thought is maybe she's not even in because every time you've seen her thus far, she's been kind of puffing yeah. on a cigarette. So you aren't sure. I mean, the wheel is turning, but it always kind of is. It's, okay. it's difficult to tell if she is in at the moment. Um, then I'm gonna continue to walk past and go to the bridge. Okay. Um, and I just wanna take a look, just a brief look around to see if like there's anyone, I don't want anyone watching me or anything, so I just wanna see who's around. Or if there an investigation check. Um, that's a three. It's an early morning hour, and if you're looking for sort of uh, some time alone, this is a good time for it. Okay. But most of the people out and about are elves who have not required the same amount of sleep, but it's quiet in Brunkalo at the okay. moment. It's not. It's nothing like when you guys like first arrived, where the thoroughfare was bustling. So, you have as much as you can tell a sort of moment of privacy here. I'm gonna take a sec to look toward the waters flowing down the river, and I'm gonna take out a silver out of my wallet uh, and look at it very carefully. 
Okay, alien. We're gonna leave this to chance because you're gonna drive yourself mad if you don't. Um, heads. You stay with the Goryeonan, away from Doxley, alone, and you finished your job because you gave your word that you would. And and even though they're a bunch of rotten folk, they are your family, and they stood by my side for 27 years, and that means something. If I flip tails, then I leave the Goryeonan right now. And I don't look back. And I go find Doxley, and I forge my own path, and that means no more manipulation, no more trickery, no more extortion, no more harming anybody that seems to come into my life. And maybe that means that when someone looks at me with a smile and calls me a friend, I can actually believe that I won't be backstabbing them soon. Oh my god, I'm gonna throw up. Okay, um, all right, Ilian. It's just one flick. Okay, um, and you promise this to yourself, Ilian. You follow through 100%. You turn around and you start to head back in the bridge, like in the sort of northeast direction across the bridge. And just as you turn, there's someone just kind of leading a couple horses through. Excuse me there, sir. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Leads the horses across the bridge. Once again, you take a look at her place and without any smoke coming out, you have that same thought again. Is she even there? Should I come back at a different time? Your fears are put to rest, however, when the front door swings open <laughs> and someone exits. Not Maeve, but a stocky man in sort of loose-fitting trousers, and he has a faded brown overcoat. He has very greasy shoulder-length hair that he tucks behind his ears before stuffing his hat back onto his head. <laughs> he coordinate. When he does, the light from the early morning sun catches his rings, of which he has one on every <laughs> finger of both hands. It's ten rings, one on each finger okay. of both hands. <laughs> Not quite. I know, I, I'm sorry. Give me a perception check. Okay. I didn't realize who I was dressed as. <laughs> this guy. This, yeah, this guy. <laughs> Here I am. Um, that's a 12. 12, okay. It's Maybe Maeve's boyfriend. NPC. As he exits and he's sort of stuffing the hat on his head, you see in his left hand, he has like a sack of some kind. And without it being structured, you're able to hear a little bit of clink, 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 clinking of glass bottles inside. So perhaps made a purchase of some potions of some kind from Maeve. In addition, when he lifted his head, uh, hand up and put his hat on his head, you got a nice view of his right hand, of which there's dried blood on his knuckles of his right hand. And you're sort of getting a, just across the bridge as he's coming out, and he's just sort of... Morning! Good morning. She's in and awake, ready for business. Wonderful, just what I was looking for. Have a good day now. And likewise. Um, Maeve, I know you said to just come in, so I'm knocking and coming in. <laughs> uh, and I push open the door after knocking briefly. Maeve's workshop has not gotten any tidier since you were last here, but the owner's perch of choice has changed. Before, she was seated on one of the tables that's up near the window so she could blow smoke out the window. But instead now, she's seated on the floor, and she has her head resting against the back wall of her home, and it's right in the spot where the noise from the water wheel comes in the loudest. Like, you, you can see there, there's like a little like vibration of the wall. And she has her head pushed tight up against it with her eyes closed and sort of a hand over her face. And she sits there for a moment. Can't fucking get rid of you, can I? I can leave if there's a better time. Are you here for your potion or you want something else? 
You're gonna hate me, Maeve. Uh, I came by because I said I would, and that's important to me. But I've seemed to loss. I've lost sight of uh, my near future, so I need. I, I, I don't need anything, and I, there will won't be any business. And I apologize for that. I didn't want you to think I was just flaking on you or forgot or something. So here I am, and I apologize. And as a bit of a sorry, I think this might. I hope this could be of use to you. And I put over a one chunk of mithril ore just on a nearby table. Sorry for wasting your time. You come here. Not to buy something from me, but to give me a fucking rock and say sorry? Exactly. You come alone this time. Did your friend find someone else to get that schooling she wanted so badly? To my knowledge, no. Um, but I realize it's no longer my business. It's her future and she should grasp it herself, so... She is smart though, Maeve, and you She might be nice to have her around. Have a good one. Give me a persuasion check. <clears throat> He's like, damn. <laughs> the nine. What did you do? Uh, I beg Before your you came to fucking Brunk Hollow. What line of work were you in? Uh, it's a family business of uh, trade at the docks. I ask because it's somewhat unusual for a new arrival's first stop to be looking up the finer fucking dialects of Orkish. Oh, that's for someone else that we came into town with and I hope to manifest a better relationship with. Um, I don't seem, I don't care anymore, so it doesn't matter. Sorry for your fucking apathy. Um, if that's all, Maeve, I'm, I'm going to leave now. Thank you for your time. Do you come from people with a strong sense of respect and honor toward the deceased? The people I come from, I would say, for the most part, no. Um, for the family, yes. I'm not really asking about your family's fucking politics. I'm asking, is a body just a body to you? No, of course not. I never fucking mind. You can go. Good day, Maeve. Good day. Open the door and I leave. <sighs> Shuts the door behind What? And... I'll find a nice place along the river to, if I could like find a patch of grass to like just lay down and look at the sky for a little bit. Okay. Think. Um, give me a perception check. <laughs> I was gonna say. Oh, oh yeah. shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> 23. 23. Oh, shit. <laughs> As you're sort of sitting there just meditating, thinking about everything you just sort of talked with Daphne about, as you open your eyes, you just sort of take in the surroundings. You use that moment to kind of center yourself and look around at the beauty of Broncalo Valley and then down towards the homes around you. And the first thing you see is Ilian emerging from Maeve's place. And he sort of comes out. He seems to have a little look of consternation on his face, just like he's sort of conflicted in some way. And you find a spot to lie down. Is that what you're doing? Somewhere along the river. That's... You watch Ilian lie down on the ground. Anything else? Nope. You see him? I mean, he's basically on the opposite side and maybe, you know, 40 feet to, to your right a little bit along the bank there. How bad does he look? Like, <laughs> does he look like he's going through it a bit? Uh, with that perception check, he, I think he seems obviously conflicted. Like, he, yeah. you get the impression that he's not aware that anyone's watching him, so you can mm -hmm. see him kind of just sort of obviously tense or sort of uncomfortable. You don't know what's going on, but yeah, he, you especially given the contrast of the Ilian that you've been talking to for the most part, who's been sort of helpful and um, sort of lively. Yeah. It has a very different energy to it, to the Ilian that you've interacted with thus far. Uh huh. Are there trees along the riverbank? Uh, oh my there's gosh. Like reed, there's like reeds, like a lot of kind of cattails and reeds, so okay. not trees, but 
Okay. If you like crouched in the Yeah, well perhaps crouching low to the ground. I'm gonna travel sort of like almost so I'm like directly across the river from him. Sure. And keeping in mind <laughs> what Daphne said to me about being careful rushing into things in Brunk Hollow mm-hmm. um, and him giving a kind of weird energy that I haven't seen coming off of him, I'm gonna watch him. Okay. Oh my gosh. And I'm gonna <laughs> follow him wherever he goes. Give me a stealth here. check with advantage. <sighs> okay. How the turn table. <laughs> <laughs> she got you. She got up my ass. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. Oh, okay. wait, wait, did you say per- wait, with advantage? Stealth. Yeah, stealth. Stealth with advantage. Oh, 17. 17. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you, right now he's just lying by the bank, but you, you start to stay crouched by the reeds and with yeah. intention to maybe follow him, depending on where you go. Yes. We're going to pivot back <laughs> to Narvo's scene. Oh, Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it seems that Gujek and Izzy, at least if not come to an arrangement, finish their discussion. You see both of them stand up. Gujek takes the bottles. He doesn't leave them. He looks like he takes okay. the bottles that were out and puts them back in his briefcase that he closes and then puts the sort of uh, chain that he had back around his wrist there that keeps it affixed to his person. The two of them sort of it looks like Izzy goes for a handshake, but Gujek kind of gives her a bow, and then she motions to the door, and the two of them look like they're heading back into the, the building proper. Okay, almost comically, Doxley like shakes out of it and is like hustling a little bit back to get okay. toward the door. As you're sort of moving back, you watch as Micah mirroring your movements, take some quick footsteps back, and as he gets to the thoroughfare and you are approaching the edge of that alleyway, he sort of motions toward the door. Doxley bows. And as she starts walking past him, she'll put her javelin back into her. Are you going back into yeah. the place? Great. Trying to then find a spot to kind of recover and make it seem like she never left anywhere, but. Okay, give me a uh, give me a <laughs> deception check. Deception? Yeah. <laughs> That's not gonna be good. You had a lot more distance to cover yeah. than, than the two of them. We can say that you started moving as soon as you saw them get up. Nine. You you reach the inside before they're fully in the next room, but you're not able to like find a spot to pretend like you were seated there the whole time. Right. So it seems obvious that you were moving around a little bit. Sure. Also, complicating your deception is the oh fact God. that Micah s- casually strolls back in. Like oh, yeah. he slowly reaches the entrance, sort of moves past, and he gets back to his little spot that he had a desk, and he sits back down. When, when he walks past her under her brush, she'll just say, Thanks for playing along, Micah. Mm. He sits. And Izzy and Gujek return to the room. I think we uh, finished up for now. I've given Mr. Claiborne a couple of propositions to mull over. He's gonna take some time and think about it. I imagine when he returns to give me his answer, you'll be here to escort him. If I am that lucky, yeah. Unless you got a letter to send, I suppose I'll see you then. I take it, given the amicable conclusion reached here today, that next time you won't go peeking through my window. Micah has his limits. And so do I. Just doing my job. You said your name was Doxley. Doxley Tyroon, yeah. Tyroon. I don't suppose that your surname and the fact that you a sea elf is any sort of coincidence, is it? It is not. No. Well, you remember where you are, honey. She sits back down at her desk. <gasps> Whoa. You, you a long way from Slim Harbor. I'm excited to be here. I'll see you around, Izzy. See you when you come back with Goo Jack. I'll wait for Gujek to leave and I'll follow behind him. Sort of bows once more to Izzy, makes his way out the door. We are going to pivot over. Now with an invitation, (laughs) rather than an imposition. What's going on with her? (laughs) You walk with confidence toward trusted timber. It seems a little silly, but just having someone here who you knew on the outside, even an estranged one such as Josie, helps you feel less alone. The familiarity counterbalancing the oddity of this settlement, a place that 
the gods seemingly have abandoned, a place where prayer feels somehow taboo. The doors to the barn-like structure serve as a storehouse for unprocessed logs, and the doors are open, and you can both see and hear Josie, who's working on getting one of the trunks delimbed. You watch her powerful shoulders kind of rotating in sync with the repetitive noise of the saw blade, sort of And every once in a while, you'll hear like a as she snaps one of the branches off and then moves to another one. There's a bandana around her head to keep the sweat from dripping into her eyes. And after she snaps another branch, she tosses it into a pile sort of down off to her left and finally sees you on your approach which prompts her to kind of put the tool down and wave you past the fence on the perimeter of her property. Good morning. Morning. You made it through your first night in Broncolo. Yes. How did you sleep? Well, hmm. it's quiet here. That's good. A lot of people find that the first night is restless, which I suppose could be sent of any new place when you leave your home behind. I was pretty fucking exhausted. <laughs> Uh, have a seat anywhere you like. Logs and stumps aplenty. Is there anybody around, like workers around? No, yeah, right. nobody here at the moment. Yeah. Can I get you uh, water, whiskey? Um, no, I I'm fine. Thank you don't you. mind if... Uh... No, please. You are hard at work. So, talk to me. Yes. I... I do not wish to presume too much. I have not seen you since we were children. But I was not entirely truthful when I said my reason for coming here was to be a stonemason. Hmm. Disappointing for me. It's not that I couldn't help. I took the liberty of asking around. There's a nice plot available just over the bridge past the cemetery. I think Izzy was holding onto it with ideas of cattle grazing, but her attention's occupied elsewhere. Two acres, reasonably priced at 750. And you can see she's like giving you a little oh. bit of a sell. <laughs> well, I will not say no right away. I'm not sure I have that kind of gold on hand. Fair enough. But the Treasury of Broncolo is set up just for that purpose. Would they give a loan to a flea bag? They would, if they had someone to vouch for them. <laughs> I don't know if... I'm looking for a man. And... Once I am... Once I have found him, I don't know if I will be welcome. Which is why I hesitate to put you out on searching for a plot or setting up a business. You are an old friend and I don't wish to deceive you about my purposes here. The intention being to find this person and once you have, leave Broncala with this person. Perhaps. Or at least have justice. It's not me, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I say this with the full knowledge that you could be naming someone I'm not ready to give up. Who are you looking for? Do you know of a Haskell Pips? The name sounds familiar. Must have never commissioned work from me or else I'd remember. He... is responsible for the death of my family. And I tell you this, not to enlist you in my cause, or to have you help me search for him, but to let you know that my intentions, though, maybe violent, are just. No one seems to know where he is. Now, I have only been in town briefly. I'm happy to work for you. 
I need coin. We all do. If you have jobs for me, but I would not have you put yourself out. Putting up my name for a loan or anything like that. Give me an insight check. Come on. Okay. Um, 14. 14. You pick up on a mixture of sort of feelings. First of all, she seems blindsided by the shift in sort of your potential intentions. When she spoke to you at the Lucky Heathen, she got the sense that there was some stuff you were leaving out, you were in the presence of somebody else, you guys weren't alone, but she seems very obviously disappointed and just sort of thrown a little bit, sort of unsure what to make of it. There's also mixed in there a little bit of conflict on her part because if what you say is true, like, it's been a long time since you guys have, your families have like sort of worked together. However, you guys were good friends. Your families were good friends. So if what you say is true, like that's a deep sense of like, of horror that, that, that someone would do that. Yeah. Um, so you're picking up on sort of a lot of conflicting emotions as she sort of sits there and thinks. You need not give me any answers today or, or anything. I, but I, I know there was a deception and one I must maintain in order to move through this strange new place. But I do not wish to deceive you, and I know coming in after God how many years. <sighs> my apologies, Josie, but that is my cards on the table, as they would say, in the lucky. It made me sad when the Ishtigs left the city. This is worse. Without intending to pick at a scab, you said last night you were the last Ishtig in the wild. I know your parents weren't young, but it didn't occur to me until later that you might have meant your brother as well. Yeah. All of them. Haskell Pips is not some sort of pseudonym for a cleric, is it? No. Well, I wouldn't say I'm the best person to ask. I'm not quite as social as some others in Broncolo. Those that see the most people come and go are probably the Monteros at the Lucky Heathen, Vincent at the Music Box, maybe Mr. Clemens if he spent any time at the hotel. Hmm. Did you know him? You would recognize him if you saw him. He is burned into my brain. Hmm. It is not a large town. You are the third person I have said, I have asked who says they haven't seen them in a while. It seems odd to me. Could be. I Could suppose. be he's dead already. Yes. And I will be here. <laughs> and I will look in earnest for a loan for that land. You check Little Hollow yet? What is that? Most people around here call it Clinkertown. It's the area around the prison. Mm. You sure he's here and not there? No. Like you said, small town. Seems unusual that no one would know where he is. Suppose you could ask there. Thank you. Do you have a job that you need helping with while I search? She kind of looks around. No.
Well, I will check in. Please do. If finding this Mr. Pips is why you came here, and I'd not keep you from that goal, there are people here who are very good at finding people. Izzy Narvos, Bison. On a different day, I would never recommend you work alongside them. Why is that? Both of them have reputations for getting what they want, which can be good or bad, depending on what end of it you are. You were at that meeting, right? I was. Anyone that's been in town at least six months was invited. Did they tell you about the statue? Yes. What I'm working on right now is a might unusual. I've been commissioned by Bison to piece together a treadwheel crane. The statue that he found at the dig site, it's too big to break down and haul back up in pieces. Hmm. Statue's in pretty good condition despite being fully buried when they found it. I guess it had a sort of spiritual look to it because it spooked the miners. They had a meeting yesterday to discuss it, as we said. Yeah. I've been commissioned to build this crane so that they can haul it up out of there. Is it wise to do that? I don't know. Longest tenured members of the camp took a vote on what to do with it after narrowing it down to three options bring it on up, bury it back where it was, or destroy it. A number of people abstained because they didn't know what to make of it. And in the end, the tally came out right for hauling it up. Hence the need for the crane. You feel it is a good idea? I abstained. I haven't seen it with my own eyes, though I imagine I will when I help transport the crane up to the dig. I imagine so. I might need someone that I trust to go up to the dig site with me. I would help you. Gladly. Bison made a sketch of the statue that he passed around. It's like a, it's like a man holding up a bowl as a, like an offering. I've got the sketch here somewhere. I asked for it so I didn't make the crane too big or too small for its proportions. Apparently when they found it, the head had already broken off. Oh man. Do you know what stone it is made out of? Like I said, I haven't taken a look at it yet. Damn. Is he seated on something? I don't know. Could be it was just the piece of stone that it was carved out of. Sure. Would you like it back? And for those at home. Oh! Yeah, oh. put it on! Show it to us! <laughs> Move this out of the way. <laughs> That would have spooked me too. Oh. Uh, oh, it's just a third leg. What? What did you just fucking say? Get out of here. Saying it has a big dog. <laughs> Literally, you get out of here. Uh, I'll have that drink now, Josie. She <laughs> pours. Do you want to get her? Oh, she's got that. Oh, who do you think I am? Do you want to roll? <laughs> I'll let you know when I'm taking the pieces of the crane up to the dig. Izzy or Bison? 
Who is more trustworthy in your eyes? Neither. Do you find it lonely here? No. Several years after you'd moved to the outskirts, my family got commissioned by the city council to do several projects for the Church of Unesia, which I had no problem with, except that my parents saw it as their chance to get in on high society. They desired very strongly for me and my sisters to pivot into politics now that we had a good relationship with some of the clergy. I didn't see that kind of life for myself, which my mom and dad couldn't fathom. It was a side of them I'd never seen before. Until then, they always seemed to take so much pride in their work. Anyway, I left and I bounced from city to city, town to town. There was jobs to be had, I wasn't starving. But the more people talked about Brunk Hollow, the more it seemed like what I was looking for. Fresh start, high demand, nothing expected of me. I encourage you to go on a similar journey of self-discovery. If you ask for Izzy's help, or Bison's help, that's the only thing you'll ever be. Thank you for your counsel. I will carefully consider it. I am almost too raw to feel anything. So I will take my time with this decision. Glad to hear it. I feel I have ruined your morning. <laughs> Work sets the mind at ease. I have trees to strip. That's what I'll do. Indeed. I will see you soon, Josie. You let me know about that plot. I promise that Seven fifty, that's a good price. Two acres? Two acres. Just past the cemetery. Sounds wonderful. Thank you. And I'll put my hat. And with a sense of just all of the ache and hurt. <laughs> Turn and sort of before she sees any of that, um, go back for her thoroughfare. And as you're walking away, you hear the kind of but <laughs> it picks up a little bit. And that's where we're going to take a little break. Oh my oh. goodness. Thank you for being good. Uh, <laughs> hanging tight. Uh, we're bouncing around. Anthony, you're killing it, Anthony. Meanwhile, TC um, tripped and died. This is died. the best role-playing I've ever seen from you. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> you had a wonderful guest cameo as the guy that yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. That was awesome. Oh, um, man, excellent. Our business yeah. is, oh. is, a lot going is on. out and about here in Broncolo. Oh. Um, and that is where we're gonna pick it right back up when we get back oh, from our break. Okay. Holy lord. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Much to do. Woo. Um, people on TikTok, we're gonna sign off and do a 15 minute break. If you wanna watch silly, stupid puzzles, come to Twitch, but we'll be back on TikTok in about 15 minutes after the break video is done. Um, Enjoy the puzzles. Enjoy yeah. Brunk yeah. Hollows, uh, Powerball, Powerball and, uh, it up. and the show game. Yeah. Can you win a VIP spot? Yes. <gasps> Being super lucky. Get those numbers in now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be right back in just a little bit. We'll pick it right back up. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. 
congratulations to all of you for staying in your costumes because I oh, couldn't. I might. I might. I You could have jumped up and gotten. You could. But you made it. You made it. I made it. I made it. You can put the plastic. Quitter. Yeah. Quitter. 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 Bring back Jim Carrey. I'll just put the mask on and take it. That's worse. That's so much worse. All right. All right, everybody. We'll see you after the break. You know those edible panties? What? Oh, they just no. have that really what latexy. Anthony? A sentence that you shouldn't say in a group is, you know those edible panties. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Oh, cheers. 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 got the lowest, but she's impossible Woo. to hit. Yeah. And what I, you, I, I'm resistant to- That is not true. Damage. I have taken damage <laughs> every time we've gotten into a You have a, a very high. But like, but you guys, you're all gaslighting me. No. Um, but I was like, okay, in the 5e world, it's a low magic campaign, but the magic's still there. We just don't have a way to access it yet. We spent a long time figuring out how we're gonna talk, because if we're gonna be siblings, we have to be the same, but we wanna have cool voices. <laughs> and so we went back and forth about like... It'd be like midnight on a Saturday when we'd be like, all right, how about this one? <laughs> Is this how you're feeling? <laughs> it's always good to be on the receiving end of theories. It feels Can you please take that off? <laughs> It, no. It, uh, what was the inspiration for the Samson Brothers? The, it's, it sounded almost Werner Herzog. That's a good one. Um, it, that's one ah. movie I'll use. But it was actually um, Kumail Nanjani. Cheers to you Thank guys. You, um, Thank you, Twitch. Thank you, Twitch. Hello! <laughs> Welcome back everybody. Sorry for the little delay. The TikTok app is always an adventure. Um, so if you can't hear us on the TikTok app, come on down to Twitch. <laughs> if you can, great, you can stay there. <laughs> um, we hope you had a lovely break. I don't think we had any Powerball winners to my knowledge. We did not. We did not. No, I'll scan again, but I don't think we did. Hold on one Sorry, second. We have audio! Oh, so if TikTok is your platform of choice. Shoo. Good Welcome thing we didn't back. talk any shit. <laughs> yeah. We didn't say anything so about it. said a little shit about right. the app. Right. Um, oh yeah, I got I got tanked some people. Oh yes, oh, please, yeah. please, so do. please do. And then we got stuff to do! We got some stuff <laughs> to do, you are right. You are right, little bee. <laughs> little crying right. bee in the middle of the thoroughfare. Little sad bee. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, uh, Mary the New resubscribed Shades of Blue gave out five community subs. Wiz Redding, Wiz Redding did a thousand bits. I said Class Worship did a community sub. Wiz Redding gave it another bit sub. Low Brass Guy did a hundred bits. <laughs> Very upset that you took your costume off. Mary the Noob gave out five community subs. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Yes, very, very much. Nice. Um, a reminder of Twitch Prime, if that's something that yes. you have. A, if you have, you have a have spare any? Twitch yes. Prime, feel free to throw oh, your yeah. support in. I actually need um, to do that. I should do that. That's for me. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. There you go. A little <laughs> reminder for you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. It's time for us to dive back in to Brunkala. Oh, a Nerf Master. Sorry. Hey, thank you. Just gave out five community subs. Oh, thank you. Damn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You did not nerf us. You buffed us. Yeah, yeah. Can we the just skip master. TC for the rest of the time? <laughs> oh I'm kidding. I so much better as a silent my... protagonist. TC, yes. I'll just email Matt later and we'll talk about all the cool stuff that I did. No, I literally think while we were doing all this, yeah. TC like tripped down the stairs at Paramount and just died. <laughs> like had a concussion. Damn. I am very nimble. He is. Yeah. He is so nimble. He, he climbed the Nimble is a forest creature. Climbed, he landed on we, his booty. <laughs> and he survived. There would have been no injuries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there were. Yeah. Soft, just landed. who he landed on. T, C, pick, G. Feeling the weight <laughs> of your butt. No. Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> of the mithril ore in your knapsack. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> you head for the river with plans to barter mm -hmm. with the town's best known alchemist. Your knowledge of things metallurgical is limited. Uh -oh. But you're certainly aware that the ore has value. And in your head, you weigh the pros and cons of a simple sale versus having the mithril crafted to your specifications. You spot the house with the adjoined water wheel and stop for a moment to compose yourself, looking first up at the surrounding hills and then forward across the creek to observe the dwellings now during the daytime. Such a curious place, you think and with not a church, a monument, or a mural anywhere to be seen. If one lived here long enough, 
they might forget the god's existence altogether, which you have to imagine is part of its appeal. Give me a perception check. Oh, Come on, buddy. 22, 22. Yeah. <laughs> Don't bitch <laughs> As you're standing there, observing your surroundings, taking in the town here on your first real morning here in Bronk Hollow, you look across the river, you see the line there, you see the uh, largest building on the left, that's the Merc Hall that you visited last night. <sighs> A few more dwellings along. And then some of the buildings on sort of further down on the right, also behind them have fields of wheat and sort of grain, some farming going on on that side. And as your eyes are just kind of tracing the horizon there, you spot someone that, despite being unfamiliar, draws your attention in a way that surprises even yourself. Like, it's not like you're like, I know that person. It's just something in the back of your head that sort of piques your interest. The person has dark skin and gray hair, short trimmed beard, a wide brimmed hat pulled low across the brow, which is strange given that the overcast sky isn't particularly bright at this moment. You watch that person moving along the row of houses on the opposite bank, but before you can even kind of take in that information or do anything with it, you hear the sound of footsteps approaching, and before you even turn all the way around, you're shoved hard, <gasps> and you scramble to keep your balance. Give me a strength saving throw. Excuse oh. me. Natural 20. Na oh, yeah, let's, let's go, go. Let's go. TC gets shoved and he takes a couple steps and he does that thing where like you take a couple steps and then a couple wide steps to try and stop yourself from falling all the way forward. And you steady yourself and you turn back around where a young half elven man stands before you. The sides of his head are shaved into an undercut and he has a chin that could cut glass and his green trimmed gray jacket is unbuttoned in the front to make for a more casual appearance. And he sort of holds out his hand in an almost condescending way. Oops. Didn't see you there, you brunky fuck. Maybe don't stand in the middle of a thoroughfare with your dick in your hands if you're gonna go off daydreaming. Of course, I could have moved around you, but you got a face only a mudder could love. Think the mud only improves your overall unseemliness. My, my. <gasps> I have just met so many friendly people in this town, and you, my friend, are the tippity top. Oh, no. Natural 20. Oh, no. Ooh. Come on. Fight this he does, he, There's no roll because it's just an unarmed strike. You take uh, three bludgeoning down. Whoa. <clears throat> I'm gonna, with, with the like large movement of mm -hmm. my head, I'm gonna like very quickly attempt to pull my short sword mm -hmm. and not strike, but like bring it up under Great. his chin. Great, so as you get struck in that <laughs> same motion, <laughs> you take the sword out in one kind of swift <laughs> draw, yes. and you already kind of have the sword up at him, and after that he sort of stands for a moment, and you see now he has like, they were behind a little bit, so you didn't see them right away, but trailing him are two or three other people in gray mm -hmm. and green, like the gray jacket with the green trimmings there. Yeah. And this this sort of standoff happens right away, and he kind of looks right at you, and one of the guys walks up and sort of places his shoulder on, or places his hand on the man's shoulder, yeah. and sort of turns him ever so slightly. Typically, when somebody puts their hands on me in that way, I like to know their name first. <laughs> He spits kind of down by your feet. And his, the, the friend who had sort of put his hand out, sort of, come on, come on. You got a supervisor over there with the clink? Try Organder. He starts to walk up the third part. Oragander, O-R-A-G-N-D-E-R, Oragander. Or Gander. <laughs> did he speak? TC's a big Karen. Give me a perception check as well. Perception. Um, 19. 19. As they're walking away, you still have your short sword drawn and you kind of follow them a little bit. But then as you just look back in the direction of where you were headed originally, mm. there's like a curtain open by the window and you see the face of an elven woman. 
who then closes the curtain, the water wheel. Yep. And watch them go for a few minutes. They walk down. A couple times you see them kind of... And it looks like, I'll put this into your perception check as well, it looks like they're headed generally in the direction of good as gold, which Mm. you've been to, so you kind of know generally where that's headed. So they seem to be moving toward that building. I mean, this is the first time I've seen a group of people in un- in that uniform in a group yes, yes. like mm-hmm. this. you've seen one or two yeah. here and there but yes so like a, a group of them yeah group of them like mm-hmm. that <sighs> TCO kind of refix himself there and straighten his hat and everything I'm going to take a look back over where I saw that person you were talking about a minute ago before this happened across the river yeah across the river didn't get a sense of which direction they were going or? Uh, they were headed uh, northwest. So like uh, if they had gone over the bridge, which you didn't see them do, yeah. it looks like they're going north along the line of homes there. Okay. Uh, here, I can bring this up one more time as well. Gotcha. So yeah, you initially. So almost coming maybe from the Murkall area and headed north. Yeah, there. you initially saw them like right here and sort of. Uh, yeah. But, but like you said, by the Murkall, yeah. and they were walking in this direction, sort of up along the edge, but you didn't see exactly where they went. I'm, I got, I'm going. I'm gonna follow. Across the yeah. bridge? I'm gonna go across the bridge. Right. And uh, you pivot from your intended kind of line there, foot footsteps across the bridge there. And a couple people are coming and going now that, uh, because we're not sort of in the, the elven morning, there's a lot of people coming to and from the Merc Hall. So it seems mm-hmm. like a busy spot. People either, you see a number of people just kind of weapons casually over their shoulder, armor not fully adorned yet. They're not clearly sort of in business mode yet, but people kind of moving by. A couple people like sort of tip their hats to you as they move by, mm-hmm. just sort of cordially. You get to the other side, and once you get past the Murkhall, it gets kind of quiet again. This row of houses doesn't have a ton of people out here. There's one guy who's kind of on his porch, and if you remember when you were on the opposite side, this might have been one of the houses that had some of the like grain behind it. So a farming house of some kind. Mm-hmm. One guy's kind of rocking back and forth on his porch there. Give me an investigation check. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Uh, uh, 18. 18. You keep moving along the bank there. You look down and because the person was walking relatively close to the bank, it's a little softer soil there. You see some larger footprints. In fact, you put your footprint down on one of them and the person's foot is another couple of inches bigger. So a large sort of footprints here. After a few more steps, they sort of disappear. It seems like the person kind of moved further in and is no longer kind of walking along. Okay. You certainly didn't see that person go in anywhere, but from where you are and where the footsteps start to disappear, there's probably the last four houses on this block. So presumably the person disappeared in or around the last four houses. Once again, I'll bring this up one more time. So uh, we're looking at, you walked along here. So one of this, 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 or this is presumably where he might've disappeared. On the left there. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because this one on the right, you feel like you would have still been able to see the footsteps based on the, okay. uh, the quality of the soil. All right. Um, under the uh, pretense of just, this is the first time I've been over in this section of the town, I'll kind of take a long loop and maybe, you know, check out that tall structure there uh, where the where the river kind of forks and just kind of survey and... Sure, the, the like, watchtower? Yeah. There is indeed a watchtower there in okay. the corner. It's pretty tall. And there's someone up there who has... They're not, like, a bow out, but they have, like, a bow sort of slung over their shoulder, and they're just kind of keeping an eye. It seems like the town has some sort of conscripted sentries that at least sort of make sure that no creatures come barreling in from the woods or anything like that. Okay. Uh, and then... Yeah, just again, just kind of a slow meander and... Like around the tip there, the corner there? Uh, like the is left. there, are there people kind of, is there a flow of foot traffic going around that corner? Or would it be kind of like, oh, you're going behind people's houses and that's um, less trip. Once you get past that fenced in property there on the edge, that would be a little bit like you're kind of going into someone's backyard. Okay. Like there are not people walking to and from where you All currently right. are. So I'll, I'll go back the way I came, but... Okay keeping uh, an eye on each one of those windows as I pass by. Just kind of... Okay, give me a uh, perception check. Perception. 
Uh, um, 21. 21. You don't see anything through any of the windows. That guy who's kind of rocking in his chair on his porch mm-hmm. sort of sort of gives a look back, yeah. maybe even unintentionally, like he didn't mean to do that, Ooh. but. He looks back into his, like, towards his place. Mm-hmm. I'll just give a kind of, yeah, I'll do the same. Morning. Morning? Lovely morning, isn't it? It's nice. <laughs> Enjoy it. Day tea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. He said good day too. I know, but yeah, he, yeah. he kind of slurred his words a yeah. little bit. Okay. But, yep. All right. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go back, uh, kind of where I was originally headed there. Okay. You reach the other side of the bridge once more, and sort of sort of mind racing a little bit. You feel a little bit of like nervous energy, yep. even if you're good at hiding it. There's mm-hmm. sort of a little bit of nervous energy there. <clears throat> oh. And I'll go up and uh, uh, that, I'll look in that same window where she she, she looked There's out a before. curtain down. It's, it's yeah, closed you don't see still. Yep. Okay. I'll go up and give a good <laughs> knock on the door. And there's a moment and then kind of, oh, for fuck's sake, come the fuck in. <laughs> you head on inside, and there's an elven woman, very pale skin, who, she seems a little tired, and in addition to that, she's sort of very frantically working on, like, something alchemical. She's pouring a couple things. She's working very quickly, as if on a deadline. Like, you see her sort of... And she looks to you, she's going, Can I help you? Uh, I see you're busy, uh, but... I am. I had just one or two requests that I thought you might be the person for. Ace. You familiar with her? I know Ace, yeah. She buys stuff from me sometimes. And if you're looking for a friendly discount, none of that. Not at all. Just that I was referred by her and she had in her possession a very particular set of playing cards. The Thunderstone fucking cards, yeah. Sure. (laughs) <laughs> um, being new to town, I'm not exactly flush with cash, but I, I did come by a few meaningful chunks recently, and I'll I'll go into my and take out uh, two of the of the miniatures. Sure. Your miniatures. She sort of gives it a look. They you sort of hold it close enough to the window that it catches the light a little bit, and she <laughs> seems uh, she seems to know right away that it's not some crappy metal. Like she mm-hmm. she can at least recognize the the value of it. You got some aversion to taking your spoils to the smithy? Uh, thought about it. Um, is that what you would do with it? Is there some... I'll take it off your hands for the crafting of my instruments, but most prospectors don't come here to offload. To be honest, I had a third that I was possibly going to use myself, but if these were, say, worth how much to you, each one? Going rate in Brunk Hollow is 100 gold per pound. That's per pound of the metal, not pound of the ore. Oh. If, I, <laughs> if I had to guess, I'd say you got maybe a half a pound you could squeeze out of each of those. Now you subtract the privilege of making my acquaintance, I'll give you 125 for all three. <laughs> DC tries to do some quick math. A couple things. I mean, yeah. so it seems like based on her pricing, it's mm-hmm. 50 gold per piece because there's a half pound in each of them. But if you get them... Uh, Smelted. Yeah, exactly. No, she's saying oh, she'll okay. buy the ore and that's a standard going rate that like each of yours would be worth 50 because they've got about a half a pound of mithril in them. Gotcha. But she's offering you slightly less than that. Okay. In addition to that, even the price, not her discounted price, feels a little low. However, in Brunk Hollow, the hills are very rich here, and the mithril yeah. here probably has less value than it does in right. Huron or Seawall or Utnesia. Like, that, they're very far from a from a strong mithril deposit. So the price feels a little disappointing, but at the same time, it's not it's not out of the, it doesn't seem like she's fleecing you. It's right. just like, that's just kind of how it is here. How about 80 off the price of one of those pack of cards for two of them? I don't normally sell items of that nature to people that I do not know. Ah. 
Well, my name's TC. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, TC. Jeez. Look, you can do whatever the fuck you want. I assumed you came here because you rightly figured that Crenshaw would get it back to Bison that someone's dig proved out. And Bison might look into where it came from. You ready to have that conversation? Perhaps. All right, how about this? I, you heard that yesterday morning a uh, bit of a hubbub happened to some flea bags coming into town. Yes. Well, I'm out a bottle of Alchemist's Fire as well. Is that something that you'd be comfortable selling to me? I could make an arrangement for it, sure. All right. We could start there, and then perhaps in the near future you would deign me with some of your more interesting items. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Ace. And if I find out that you lied to me, these doors are closed to you. You fucking understand me? Absolutely. It's 70 per flask. How about for two chunks of mithril? Mm -hmm. All three, and I give you two. Oh. Sidebar. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> With one chunk of, of the mithril mm -hmm. that I have. Um, and I'll assume that I've showed her all three now. Um, yeah, at least you said they're all three anyway. Yeah, they're all of yeah, real, they're they're all real size. The yeah, okay. Um, we talked about how I could possibly get like some good ammunition with it. Is it something that I could tip the short sword with? Would that give benefit? It could. It might not be... It wouldn't be like a plus indefinite. one. Well, it also, oh. it might provide some benefits like that, but it just wouldn't be indefinite. Like it might, the mithril might wear down and then, because it would only be coated, it wouldn't be like a mithril sword. You're right. not crafting a whole sword out of it. Right. You're just coating. So it might provide some bonuses temporarily. Yeah. For a, for a number of attacks. Mm. Take that to you. Take that to you. Oh, oh look at you, you <laughs> mean. There's a bee whisper yeah. comes through the window. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need some friends. I need some friends. The deal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Leave it on the table. Could probably have both of them to you by sometime tonight, seven or eight. Perfect, thank you. All right. A quick question for you. I, I saw someone walking on the other side of the river that I swear I recognized him, but, and I'll describe mm -hmm. the, the person I saw. Is that somebody who lives on the other side of the river over there? I ain't in the snitching business, sir. I mean, I could go knock on the doors myself. I just... Why don't you go do that, then? <laughs> Very well. I'll give you one for free. That fella that ran into you in the thoroughfare? <sighs> yeah. Mind your manners. <gasps> he came upon me. I know he did. Am I supposed to not defend myself when one of these lugheads comes around? Not that one. <laughs> he gave me an Organder. That's right. That is that his me? name? It is. Does that name mean uh, anything to you? Uh -huh. Not yet. Mm. Well, if you hear the name Corliss Organder, know that it ain't him. It's the warden at Fort Contrition. And that's his son. Isn't that tops? <laughs> <laughs> I sympathize with your misery. The wrong place, wrong time has been my theme here in Brunk Hollow so far. <laughs> well, maybe you find yourself in the right place at the right time right now. You come in on that wagon with the other flea bags? Yes. You know the little sea elf? Seems to always have a smile on his face until this morning. Oh, I suppose I haven't seen him this morning. He, the smile has faded. It's not my point. My point is, I was set to offer him a job, or at least feel out one. 
but it seems that he's preoccupied with other things. Huh. Do the two of you do business together? We have associated a few times already in the mere 24 hours I have been here, but we are no partners. That's a wishy-washy fucking answer. I'm not his fucking best friend. All right, no need to get defensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you what I asked him, please. Where you come from, is there a strong sense of respect and honor toward the deceased? Or is a body just a body? A body is just a body. Make a persuasion check. Oh, no, I meant it. I really did. Uh, 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 it's, it's good. <laughs> persuasion, dirty 20. Nice. I got an assistant whose name is Bodhi, but he turned me down on this particular task because he's a bit squeamish, upstanding fucking moron that he is. Mm. A deep gnome was killed this morning trying to collect on a contract from the Merc Hall. Deep gnome, that's a race of gnomes. Yeah. There's several different kinds of gnomes. Deep gnomes are typically underground. They have like homes in the mountains and the underground and things. They typically are. I saw them bring the body back to town on a little cart and they took him straight to the cemetery. Now, if you don't already know where this is going and your look on your face tells me you don't, <laughs> Deep gnome blood is famously fucking resistant to magic. Makes for an excellent neutralizing agent if one were to fuck up with a concoction or the like. For someone in my line of work, it's good to have around, but hard to come by. Mm. Now by tomorrow evening, or by tomorrow morning perhaps, that blood will be coagulated and beyond its useful corpse. <laughs> Others may call it grave digging, but I call it grave sampling. He's not using it anymore. <laughs> right. In the dark of night, a clever sort could get in and out without having to explain the distinction to concerned third parties. I suppose you're right. She goes over and she kind of opens up a drawer and she takes out three kind of metal syringes. Whoa. Sick. Girl. Well, I haven't been known to do much surgery in the past, but I am good with my hands, so. I think I could fill those up for you right quick. All right. May I? I'll reach over and just pick up one at first and mm -hmm. just kind of fiddle with it and maybe give it a little twirl. <laughs> <laughs> you can see her sort of tense and uh, they're delicate. Ah, I see. And like a little plunger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God. It's metal and glass. I mean, it's like a metal and glass or anything. Quite well crafted. Your own work. And I'll tuck, tuck them all away. I take all three of them. Like I said, tomorrow's too late. I imagine the cover of night will be my friend in this. So hopefully, before the sun comes up, is that soon enough? Yeah. All right. I would not normally ask a favor of a fucking flea bag. But my reputation, poor as it is, would only deteriorate <laughs> should I be caught digging up bodies in the graveyard. Messy business. Let me take care of it for you. I feel that I've regretted this decision already. <laughs> Please don't say that. You return with those plungers filled. And I will cease my worrying. And we'll tip again. Oh my god. Till tomorrow. All right then. I'll get to work on your fire. Thank you kindly. Turn. She continues. <laughs> Head out the door. The door. Close behind you. You're in the thoroughfare there. Jesus. All right. I want to find a fucking spot. 
Um, <laughs> can't go with a fucking Mark Hall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> over, do I know what? <laughs> forgive me. Um, oh, good as gold kind of sits across the water. Mm, that doesn't give me like a good view of those four houses. Good as gold does, does it? Um, well, it's not a bad view, yeah. but uh, I mean, yeah, could be better. Uh, and then, eh, honestly, I'll just do a, a a lap of that kind of side, that north side of the river again, just kind of doing my first few walks around town where I'm getting the lay, but keeping an eye of what is a good spot to see across the. Sure, give me an investigation check, Ilian. How long have you been sitting by the oh, riverbank? Oh, a while. God. And actually, I do have a question. Okay. It's yes. something that came across Please. Ilian's mind. After the guy left the building, did I ever see, because Maeve was covering her face. Mm-hmm. Did I ever see her face or no? Uh, I mean, she she was sort of leaning up against the wall. I mean, a couple times she sort of removed her hand. Okay. Are you looking for something in particular? I uh, Just having seen the dried blood on the guy's hand and then connecting that to if he hurt Maeve or something Give like that. Give me a perception check. Retroactive. Whoa. Seven uh, investigation. Uh, my god, tens across all the time. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> it, it, it was, if it was, it wasn't obvious. Like, she wasn't obviously bleeding or bruised or anything to that effect, so Jeez. it certainly didn't move them. Is that a thing where, like, if you took a healing potion right after getting in a fight, it would not show as much? Uh, it would not show as much. Like, it closes wounds, but Whoa. bruises would still yeah. be there, and, like, dried blood would still be around the area. Like, right. it doesn't just disappear. Yeah. But yeah, it quickly, it, it accelerates, <laughs> it, it basically accelerates healing. So it's like as if time had passed, but condensed into a very right. short period of time. Gotcha. Um, well then, as far as waiting there, I guess I would wait there until like noon, and then Dang, be like, boy. "Well, uh, let's go find the two people to meet up with at the heathen or whatever." As you are sort of in your own thoughts there by the riverbank, you hear a little, and you're kind of in the reeds a little bit, mm-hmm. and then you bump into Ilian there by the side of the river. Oh, young man, TC, are you all right? Why do you ask? Laid out in the reeds. Are, are you hurt, boy? No, I'm not hurt. I uh, just collecting my thoughts. That's all. You see? all right. What about you? What are you doing out here? Uh, getting a lay of the land, honestly. I feel like we've been on uh, from job to job so far in just 24 hours. I just wanted to do a little strolling. Great. I'm similar alley, except instead of strolling, just laying and taking my time. See. Comforting to be by the water, I suppose. It is actually, yeah. Um, uh, did you uh, get invited to do the go to the Lucky Heathen later? Uh, yes, you. Uh, you are my third reminder, I suppose. <laughs> but yes, I have not been over there yet. Uh, I was thinking about heading over there at some point today. Were you planning on it? Yeah, I'll be there. Time soon? Um, I. Are you heading over there soon? I was waiting until early afternoon. I didn't talk to anyone about when we would meet up or who got invited. Or... Perhaps after I've had a bit of an afternoon meal. Do you want to go get lunch, TC? I need some food as well. Are you asking me out on a, a lunch date? <laughs> I am, TC. Let's go have a lunch date. Please. Okay. Hopefully I'm better company than the frogs and the beetles. Let's go, TC. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, from the other side of the river, you see oh TC God. find his way to Ilian there, so he seems surprised to see him there. You Holy able to shit! Re- you're able to register <laughs> that. And you see the two of them have a short exchange, and then Ilian stands, and the two of them look like they're heading north a little bit. What do you do? Oh, I'm on the other side of the river, huh? Yes, you've been watching Ilian from the other side of the river. Okay, well, I guess I have to get across the river. <laughs> you quickly move around. The <laughs> I swim, I dro- shake dry. Um, I'm going to follow them, um, but as soon as I'm, we're sort of back Believe on the thoroughfare, now, right? um, I'm going to, like, you know, like, dip behind 
a building and like kind of run around the other side and then <laughs> see, see like as though I'm coming at them like we're walking in Oh, to, towards it, the, as if you were coming from a different direction? Yeah. I'm gonna um, say, given the distance that you were able to uh, maintain from Ilion, the deception is unnoticed. You, They take like a left route around <laughs> Excavation on Demand and you quickly move around the right side and come and meet them in the opposite direction. Yes. So to you guys, it looks like she's coming from kind of the uh, Paramount Logic's direction. Yeah. So you see Kate coming from the opposite direction. <laughs> Kate. Hey, were y'all heading um to go to go meet with the Monteros? Uh, shortly, we were gonna go get some food. Oh, see, it was my impression that there would be food provided at said meeting. Oh, oh I, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Maybe I our mean, lunch date will have to wait. I was thinking it was worth a shot for a free meal. I mean, a free meal. Can't say no. Uh, sure. You all right? Alien, I must Alien? say, yes, your, 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 your vigor has, has waned in these, did you have a bad night's sleep? Yeah, I think it's just exhaustion from everything yesterday and uh, just catching up with me a little bit. Um, true, true. Oh. You sure that, you're all right for a, a meeting? Do I really seem that bad? I can't handle a meeting? Maybe a, a free meal will turn that frown upside down. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll say no more, I promise. No, just, let's just go. TC, your, your advice, I'm just taking it to heart. Um, I'm sorry, I know, I, I'm fine. I'm sorry that I don't appear well, apparently. I'm gonna like take a step closer towards Ilian and like slowly reach out and put my hand on his shoulder and take a breath, you know, try to like, as long as you're trying to like get him to breathe with me like an inhale. It's a very exhale. like deliberate breath. It's okay to feel blue. I tend to all the time, as you're very aware of. That was a good joke. Maybe he is all right. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> this is uh, a shudder from teach to tea. <laughs> Do you know if, uh, I'm, I'm sure Doxley and Morna, um, did they also get invited or should we try to gather the troops and then just get this over or done? Well, I believe it was um everybody who, <laughs> Are you okay? No, I, I, I haven't seen. I saw Morna early this morning, but I haven't seen Doxley. I would imagine you would have known where she was. Well, I was under the impression it was everybody that we came into town with. I don't think it all has to happen at the same time. Okay, but that could be fun. We could do a lap and see if we see them. I love that Let's idea. Do I actually? I will stay right here in case you miss them on the lap, and then we'll reconvene. <laughs> I'm gonna turn to TC and just be like, I think Ilian needs a little alone time. I feel like he's gonna bail on us. <laughs> I can still hear you. <laughs> I feel like you are gonna bail on us. Well, I hope to see you soon. No, I will be right here, and I'll rest up against the wall of whatever building. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of right. Kind of, <laughs> oh, <that's> <laughs> You're kind of in between the EOD and that other building that you sort of don't know. Uh, TC, give me a perception check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say, are we still across the river? I, uh, where we could see across to uh, Vaguely, yeah, I mean, you've walked a little bit. So. Uh, 19. 19. What you do see is you are passing kind of by Good as Gold and now coming out of Good as Gold. Uh-oh. They don't seem to see you, yeah. but the same guy with his several people in tow are carrying some like crates and sacks out of uh, out of Good as Gold. Can, can I see the shapes or what they might be? Uh, there might be some tools or weapons in the sacks. The crates are crates, so you can't get any sense of they look heavy. They seem to be sort of at least struggling a little bit to carry them. But the okay. sacks you might have some tools or weapons in them. All right. Um, if I'm like you know side to that. Yeah, it's like uh, left side or out of yeah. your periphery there. I'll, um, friends, get a load of and I'll I'll gesture over to the. Am I still with them or have they already started walking? They haven't started. Oh, yet. Okay. yeah, that was before they sort of. Uh, get a load of the uh, small. Clink of clinkers coming out of good as gold over there. You see the grain green yeah. uniforms. And I'll point out, I'll just, you know. The half elf man. The half elf. Yeah. Okay. Oregander is his name. Gave me a lot of shit, but literally just standing in the street earlier. It was a real piece of work. So mm. Steer clear of him if you can. Okay. You sure you didn't do something to annoy him? I absolutely him? did not. My mouth had not opened for the day. That's, <laughs> that's not true, but. What if it was something about your face? 
I was looking the other way. Look Maybe it. my backside offended him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's jealous. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> I say only he seems to be looking for a fight at all times. He didn't get one with me just now, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was itching for one with whomever. Did you fight him back? I showed him I wasn't so easily trifled with, mm-hmm. enough so that he and his boys walked on, but I didn't strike him. That's too bad. Maybe there'll be time in the future. To be honest, I, I mean, there was four of them probably. Yeah, I mean, at first you only just saw him, but yeah. then quickly he yeah. had some people kind of come up and stop him. I for... don't know how much, how long I would have lasted against all four of them, so mm-hmm. I am glad I did not strike him, yet. Anyway. Well, thank you for the heads up. Mm. Does seem like a charming fellow. Mm. From the looks of it. We'll do our lap. Okay, yeah, I'll be right here. <laughs> Casey and Kate start to walk. We're gonna pivot back in time a little bit again and head over to Doxley. Uh huh. You finished your business, and I asked this during the break, sort of where you were headed next. You wanted to go kind of in the direction of the open market there, outside of uh, Paramount Lodging. Uh, did Gujek pay me the remaining gold? He did, in fact, yes. So I will tell you this, as you're headed back, he paid you the remaining gold, mm-hmm. and sort of in a, even if you inquired, he didn't say much about the meeting, but he did imply that um, when he was ready to make a decision, he would come find you. That he okay. wouldn't go. He, that he wouldn't go back to Izzy without uh, coming to find you first. Cool, cool. All right, great. I'm gonna head toward the open market. Head towards that open market. You look for signs of anything that you recognize. There's a number of people. Again, it seems like a, a popular spot. So that once people, there's some people selling fish. There's some people selling furs. Um, there's a couple people selling kind of. Trinkets, whether they're like wood carvings or you know ivory carvings, you know uh, sort of personal things rather than practical things. You look and you try and look in each of the stalls, and as you said, you were looking, you were keeping an eye out for. You see no sign of the goblin with his mushrooms. No. No. Give me an investigation check. Uh, you can make it with advantage because you have a second here. You know, in a hurry. What time is it, too? Yeah. Um, we've moved back and forth a few times. She's for her, it's probably around like eleven o'clock. <gasps> you should be there. <laughs> I cannot see that little goblet again. I'm gonna have a meltdown. Yeah. As you just sort of try and get a look at what might be in this stall, you do see someone that you recognize, and it's this guy that kicked him out the day before, who like mm-hmm. tossed him out of the stall. Mm-hmm. And he's in one of the stalls, and he's got some furs over his shoulder that he's kind of putting up on some rails that are up above to kind of display them. And in addition, he goes over to sort of a flat table surface, puts his hand on it, and and a bunch of mushrooms go like flying out and sort of into the mud of the thoroughfare. Fucking being fucking leaving their shit everywhere. Fucking, and he's sort of getting his stuff ready there. Doxy's gonna crack her neck a little bit. <laughs> And then walk over to his booth. <clears throat> Excuse me there. Morning. Morning. Can I interest you in the finest of furs? Oh, um, I'm fine for the moment, actually. Thank you, though. Um, I was- Bear. <laughs> Owlbear. <laughs> finest of furs. You could use it for a coat. You could use it for a, a quilt. Decoration. I am actually looking for the goblin so that was selling mushrooms earlier. Yeah, he probably scampered on back to Goblin Town. Without his wares? Well, you know, they, they get one thing in their head and they go off to forget about the last thing. Short memories. Last I saw him, he seemed pretty keen on staying here until he was dismissed. What can I say? Can't predict a goblin. So you won't have any problem with me going over there and picking up all those mushrooms and just taking them for myself then? He looks like the ones on the ground, is that mm-hmm. what you're referring to? I don't give a shit. Do you know the goblin's name? <laughs> oh my god. What's it to you? I'm just making conversation. Uh, yeah, that particular mung bean. <laughs> Let me uh, look. <laughs> oh, come on, I was waiting for like the shit stick. <laughs> Tart fart. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a 
that somewhere? Uh-oh. Mort's um, Jack. Jack Dribble. Does that seem true or does that sound Make like he's insight. pulling it out of his ass? Make an insight. Okay. Jack Dribble. Jack Dribble. <laughs> oh. Jack Dribble. Oh. Nine. As far as you can tell, I mean, he did seem like he was sort of searching his brain, but also you get the impression that he also might have like heard it wrong or gotten it wrong. Like he doesn't seem to be intentionally deceiving you is the impression that you get, but you don't get the sense that it. You sure I can interest you in the finest furs, Bronco? Uh, not today, but actually, do you come here every day? <laughs> I my booth up near every day. Sometimes I miss one. <laughs> if you're... Is he drinking, or is that yep. you? <laughs> if you're busy with other things, you mean? I got business elsewhere. Where? I hunt, get my <laughs> own furs, go out in the downwheel. That's your work there. Bear? Owlbear. Owlbear, yeah. What's your name? How do you do? <laughs> I will also search for his name. <laughs> I'm so sorry, No, I'm man. kidding, I, I haven't. Name's Sherman. Sherman. Well, Sherman, I have a brother who would be very interested in purchasing the remainder of the goblin's wares if he were to come back tomorrow before noon and this goblin is nowhere to be seen. We'll be coming to say hello to you, yeah? What? <laughs> what about that was unclear? Why would you come to see me if you can't find a fucking mung bee? I think you know the answer to that question, Sherman. I ain't gonna know where he is. Look, I don't really care how you treat this Jack Dribble, but I do care that when I come to a market to try to buy something, that the thing isn't there, then I'm pissed at whoever's stopping it from being there. I'm trying to buy a nice thing for my brother, do you understand? Why don't you just fucking go to fucking goblin tents and fucking buy a mushroom? Because I don't want to go to the fucking goblin tents, I want to do it here. Because I'm right over there. That's where I'm staying, okay? Alright. <laughs> just, I just wanna... Let me buy the mushrooms, that's all. Sorry, alright. Bye! <laughs> and I'll pick up the mushrooms. Bye! And I'll turn and I'll walk away. Duh. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go? <laughs> um, oh, Docs is trying to get uh, a present! Okay. What time is it now? You said it was like 11-ish? Like, cool, yeah, 11.30, like close to getting, approaching the midday hour. Okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for companions, but uh, I'll just go back to the hotel. Here, okay, watching. great. The, the, once again, um, they had closed them in the evening, but now during the day, the doors are wide open. So you can even get a seat at kind of one of the tables at Paramount, and you can see out into the thoroughfare. Like, you have oh, okay. a pretty good view out there if someone were to walk by. So pivoting once back around, Morna, where were you headed after visiting Josie? Um, and this is, again, a little later because the humans woke up a little later. Yeah, I would like to go <laughs> walk towards EOD to get my gold. Okay, great, excellent. So as you're walking in that direction, you find your way back to EOD, which at this hour, it, um, I said this as Ilian was going by, but it has some guards sort of circling the area, but it hasn't, until it gets a little later in the day, you won't see that the, all the carts coming in and unloading all of the goods. The It looks like the warehouse portion of it that has like a big open door is currently being inventoried. There's a number of people in there that are sort of picking up, sort of looking at the ore that they've sort of extracted from the mine and then writing down maybe, you know, how much they, how much mithril, how much copper, whatever they've pulled out there, kind of put it back down. You give a look around, you don't see Delia. She's not in there, but there's a number of other people there. And there does seem to be a, a shorter dwarven man with reddish hair that seems to be, if not in charge, at least sort of getting the information from everyone. He walks up to one person and sort of looks like he confirms with them how much ore has been pulled in. And then he kind of walks back in another direction. Hey, I'd like to approach him. Uh, Excuse me. EOD only. Sorry, I worked yesterday for Delia in the downwield. I'm here to collect my gold. Oh, the flea bags. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe we have some gold set aside. Uh, let's see. 
what was it you were expecting? 20. Good, good. Sometimes yeah. people try and uh, pull one over, get a little extra. No, sir. He counts it out, <laughs> hands it over to you. Great. Uh, there is a, a message here. He had like looked in like a log book. A reminder that when Bison hires you for a job, he expects you to be there the whole time. <laughs> Thank you. Good day, man. Good day, sir. We got the gold, right? Yeah, he did oh, okay. get it. Uh, yeah. I thought I missed it for a second. He was like, no, no. And here's your gold. It's a message. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Give it old switcheroo. Yeah. And by the time you come out of EOD, you see Kate oh, and TC God. walking through the thoroughfare. The two of them kind of heads on a swivel, looking up and down the uh, alleys. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, like the witches in Hocus Pocus, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. Uh, I won't attempt to avoid them. Though. Oh, thank I, you so much. Uh, That's so big of you. Up on your right, you yeah. can see more emerge from you. See, I knew a walk around would work. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? I that suggested it. <clears throat> good morning. Never mind. Good morning again. Hello, good to see you again. We were thinking about heading to the Lucky Heathen okay. for that uh, Montero meeting, and by that Montero meeting, I mean ideally a free lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I like where your head is, Ms. Mori. Would you like to join us? Yes, I would. Wonderful. Are you heading there now? Uh, we promised that we would do a lap and meet Ilian around the corner again. And see if I we saw his sister. Promenade with you. Let us promenade. All right. <laughs> you guys walk casually through the thoroughfare. There's a little bit of kind of weird energy because you like all split in the morning and no one has like talked about what they did in their day. So it's just kind of a, like, hmm, okay. Like nobody kind of opening the door of conversation. I got these cool syringes. <laughs> 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 and as you guys are moving, you get to basically where the open market is, and I'm going to say that Doxley, you oh, can shit. see them out the at the door there. And a, a couple, once again, TC, you do recognize the like furs. We got furs of all kinds. So you see that guy there, as well as the number of other ones, and you see them out the door. Is Ilian with them? He is not. Don't fucking wave at me. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fucking making myself known. Um, you don't see her because you'd have to look into the lucky. I'll, I'll just watch him for a little bit. Okay. You guys get to that open market there. A couple people kind of come up. One person has kind of a tray of what look to be sort of husks of corn that they sort of hold now. Corn, anyone? Corn? Corn? Fresh pick? Fresh pick corn? Not today, but... How much? Looks good. Uh, one copper piece. One copper for each. I'll take one. All right. One for you. Thank you. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good day, ma'am. I love corn. <laughs> yeah. I pass no judgment. <laughs> well, you were looking at me kind of judgy. I, we are about to go get a meal. Well, I'm hoping it's a meal, but if it's not, I want to be a little prepared. You know, bring a snack to the free You're going to be jealous when you didn't get a corn. <laughs> All right. And now seeing that oh, you guys, God. like, bought something from one of the people, oh, no. immediately oh, no. like, oh, no. people <laughs> moving in your direction. Jewelry, jewelry here, beautiful jewelry, carved, wooden carved jewelry. Only interested in corn, thank you so much though. A piece of jewelry, P jewelry, jewelry for you. <laughs> all right, all right, jewelry, uh, broncola, br made in broncola. People sort of shouting as they go back to business. <laughs> It uh, is not cooked. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say. <laughs> it is raw and it's in its. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like, uh, like an apple. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look. Oh. <laughs> and what if she does? Where, hey. where did you say you were from this morning? <laughs> <laughs> so you get to the top of the thoroughfare there. Now you have to go left or right. You're basically at the open market. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah if we came from like the south uh, west, I suppose. Northwest to do a little, a bit more. Sure, do a little circle. circle there in the northwest. Cool. As you do so, you do notice, and Morna saw this previously uh, as well. There's once again someone who's sort of standing on a little sort of overturned crate that seems to be kind of pitching for the Mercalls or serve your community and serve yourself. And as she's holding it up, you're seeing the same flyer that you saw before. I have a question. Yep. Do I sense anything about this person or the, their general vicinity or the flyer or anything like that? The Mercall person? Mm -hmm. uh, can you be a little more specific? I want to know if I'm seeing anything that sort of 
stands out. Okay. Oh my God. You, I'm sorry. Could you be a little bit more specific? Yeah. I, no, I want you to be vague. Would you care to explain? Yeah, Could you be does. vaguer? Can yeah. I look? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I, I make mini? Are they attractive to everyone I <laughs> uh, Can you give me a perception? Check? Yes, I absolutely can. What in the hell? Me confused, but I don't think I need to. Uh, excuse okay. me. Uh, I know. I know what you're. Uh, okay. Talk to the DM um, like that. I, <laughs> I don't I'm think just I need saying, to. Um, okay, that is a that is perception. Sorry. Strike. Um. Oh, it's a nine. A nine. Okay. Let me just. Uh, uh, yeah. So, um, sixty feet is the reason why. Oh, then they're not. I thought we were what? like walking right. Uh, you you will have. You can. You would need to get a little closer, oh but yeah, sixty. Feet. Yeah, as as we're like sort of parallel to them, I would like to be like what within. Okay. Not, you do? not close. To sniffing sort of distance. Our, yeah, sniffing distance. Are you <laughs> sniffing for religion? I like to sniff. I like to have a sniff. Oh. <laughs> One sniff, please. As you sort of pass by, you're, you drop back a little bit so that Kate and TC are yeah. leading the way. So you're just a couple steps back, almost, you guys aren't walking in a single file line, but like two and one, a little mm -hmm. triangle movement as you guys are moving through the thoroughfare, which doesn't seem unusual. It's pretty busy at this point. So people sort of push past each other, people drop back, people move forward, not unusual. As you move past this sort of person that has the flyer kind of up in their hand, you notice that there's a sort of bracelet on their hand, which doesn't seem unusual. There's a lot of people with jewelry sure. here. But as you get closer, it looks like the bracelet sort of catches your attention in an unusual way. Got it. Unbelievable. Got it. Cool. Do I have any other insights? Oh my about god. That bracelet? Like. <gasps> and if she... you don't want to tell me, then. No. Oh, okay. I thought she was looking for the man who killed her family. Now she's looking for bracelets. She's sensing things. And she's smelling. seeing. Um, it has a. It doesn't seem active, but it has a, an, a bit of illusory uh, sense about that is it. Very good to know. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> She's been, fuck. It was very magic. Thank you. That's like, that's like, that's like, that's like, you can like. like thanks. <laughs> isn't it, yeah, isn't illusory magic not, when you can like not, change your it's not active, appearance? You said. It does not seem active, no. You, your sense, huh. you can sense it even when it's not active. I can't. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is it? Someone tell me. What is illusory? What? I mean, like it, there's schools magic. of magic. There's, there's a bunch of different schools yeah. of magic. There's evocation. There's transmutation. There's illusory magic has to do with disguises, stealth, all kinds of sort of deceptive. And you usually magic. can't, you know, Just sense know. that with your. What is going with her? I don't know. She keeps getting weird. May I also <laughs> look at this person? Do I? Is it somebody that I recognize from the time that I spent there? Um, there was only one person there. When you yeah. were there, there was the guy that gave me the weird look, yep. and there was the guy with death. Yes, it is not. It's not either. Of them. It's not either of them. Yep, not either. Of them. All right. So join the Merc Guild. Opportunity, opportunity for everyone. You some person sort of shouting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Do, we, do any of us clock her her interest in that? No, nah, I mean, it, again, it, it, for her to kind of drop back or look around, yeah. nothing about that's unusual. There's lots of people around. So it, like, you, all of you are looking around. It doesn't seem strange to you. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't make any like obvious physical, she's not like, <laughs> she doesn't like yeah, try to squint. Yeah. Like it's just all chill. very casual. Super chill. Yeah, so chill. <clears throat> So you guys kind of circle around, yeah. and now you've sort of reached the front of Lucky Heathen. Now, if you've turned left at the open market there, what do you guys do? Were we supposed to collect Ilian? Uh, I think he's just down around the corner here. We could, yes. <laughs> Don't be too excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real drag today. <laughs> I'll get him. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a little TC scoop. hurries on back. Yeah. Was your morning productive? Yeah, you know what, I'd say so. How about you? I met with my friend. Oh, you have a friend? Oh, you didn't meet her. Oh. That... Yeah. Someone you know from outside? Yes. Um, her family was friends of mine. She's a lumber... What's the word? Arborist? Yeah. A lumber? <laughs> a lumberjack. Yeah, an arborist. <laughs> an arborist. <laughs> a woodworker. She hates when you call her a lumberjack. She hates when you call her a lumberjack. <laughs> she she's a woodworker. Oh, that's that's wonderful. It must be nice having a, someone who feels like family here. Yes. 
Do you know anyone in Broncolum? Yes, I, I also met with a friend this morning. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah, it was nice. From back home? Yeah, we went to school together. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Standoff of of not probing information. We'll pivot over to TC and Alien. Got eyes on Morna, but yeah. haven't seen your sibling. I see. Uh, it seems like Kate's gone. It seems like you lost people. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> okay. If you come with me, <laughs> yeah, um, you'll discover them all. <laughs> with your sister, knowing what Doxy was doing this morning mm -hmm. around this time, would I have any idea of like? How long that job would be if like I should still look for her and Gujek out and about, or if she wouldn't be doing that anymore, or uh, would I be able to glean anything? She didn't specify. I think you said you were you told you did tell him you were going to yeah. Izzy's yes. with uh with so by this time, that would be a long ass meeting if she was still <laughs> at that meeting. So presumably she's gone elsewhere or, or has seen to other business. That would be highly unusual. Um Okay, well, I'll just go, if I, if you guys want to head to the Lucky Heathen, I'll just do a brief look for my sister. Maybe she's gone back uh, to our rooms, maybe she's out. You couldn't have done that goal. while we were taking her walk. <laughs> I told you I was going to stay right here, and I did. Well, I suppose we didn't look hard enough for you. No, if you I'll found Morna, that's great. that's great. I'll see you over there. I'm sorry we didn't get to go on a, on a lunch date. I was looking forward to that. I was just now bringing you to that. You and me, I, I, yes. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. You and I, a, a oh rain check. God. Yes, our own yeah. personal lunch. A rain check, please. Go. Yeah, perhaps tonight, dinner. We, I'd, I'd like to get to know you better, TC. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if you don't want to, that's also fine. I no, I, 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 who knew? I didn't know where the day was going to take me, but perhaps dinner tonight. Okay, great. Uh, all right, I'll meet you guys at the Lucky Even. I pass by you guys. Hi, bye. Hello. You're actually kind of waving from down the thoroughfare yeah. a little bit, but I'm gonna say as as um, as Ilian walks a little further north, we're gonna say that Doxley is able to spot him from uh, inside okay. the lucky. Even. If I like give the window a tap, is that something he would be able to hear? Like if he's passing by <laughs> or something? Um, he probably wouldn't be able to hear that uh, given the noise of the thoroughfare. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She'll put her drink down. She'll go out. And pass by Clemens at the desk. Have a good afternoon. Cheers. All right. Um, Elian! Oi! Oh! Lucky day! <laughs> Wait, am I still ahead <laughs> What? <Yeah. laughs> you were headed in the same direction. Yeah, yeah. So oh, sure. okay. Before you split off. Okay. What luck! <laughs> we were just looking for you. Oh! Why? Uh, for what? Monteros have been pining after us for ever since we got into town. We were all gonna pay them a visit if Inclined. Oh yeah, um, Kate they was mentioned it to hoping me. there was lunch. Free lunch. Well, I can do a free lunch. That sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> yeah. is this where we? I hope so. Is this where we find him? <laughs> no, Who so runs this place? What, can we we'll, just ask? We can take you. This is their establishment. Okay. Yes. Oh, um, uh, Ilian, I uh, uh, and Doxley will. Like reach into her bag. They're all just kind of loose in her oh bag my right God. now. Dirty like, mushrooms oh, on the ground. Delicately oh. take out one that looks nice and intact and plump. Yeah. Um, they're a little dusty from the thoroughfare, but they're intact. I uh, I've I've got a whole bunch of mushrooms, and I remember the time when you got rabbit and mushroom and some kind of a sauce, and you made me something. So I found a bunch. And, uh, you went foraging for mushrooms on your own? Well, I didn't exactly forage. I was going to purchase them, but it was a goblin who got kicked out of his little stand, and I yelled at the person as best as I could. But it, if we could cook them, maybe. Yeah, I'd like that. Um, I do have dinner plans tonight, but perhaps later. You have <gasps> dinner plans tonight? I have got dinner plans tonight. With who? <laughs> 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 well, that one. Mr. Welker, yeah. Oh. Yep. Got it. It's just, yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, we all Doxley, yeah. Um, whole, <laughs> you, you haven't reached the two of them yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just, just the three of you. I wanted to show to you. That's, that's very nice. Um, yeah. It's very nice. Doxley. What do you think they're talking about? Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Alien's oh, been really sad. I wasn't trying to be private yeah. or anything. No, no, no. <laughs> he's been, he's been 
Maybe having a case of the melancholy, from what I can tell. Do I hear this? <laughs> no, again, you guys are watching. Oh, nearby, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you can see them, you guys are converted. Okay, okay. 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 Oh. I guess. Said he had a bad night's sleep. Oh. That was a lie. You're with them. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what the fuck? It's fine. I get it. He's you guys have little... converted. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay yeah. we're here. Give me a perception. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, 16. 16. As you guys once again oh converge and, and meet back up, basically sort of just outside the door of the Lucky Heathen, which at this hour, and again, I think you noticed this when you first came into town, it's slow at this time. There's some people at the tables, but it's not nearly the kind of hot spot that it was later in the evening. People kind of come and go. Some of the diehard gamblers, maybe out of the corner of your eye, you spot Mr. Warren at one of the poker tables in the back. <laughs> but in addition to that, TC takes a look down the thoroughfare and you see the back of someone's head, dark skin, short gray hair, and now, whereas they weren't carrying something before, there's sort of a satchel slung over their shoulder, and they're waking their way through the thoroughfare. They're headed to the northwest, so away from you at the moment, but they're sort of... Is it a sack that looks like the sack that the that the clinkers had? Like maybe it was from Good as Gold? Uh, no, it looks much bigger than that. It's like over his shoulder, yeah. both hands, and he's like, Working his way through the third. Yeah, so much larger than the one that they had. Um, uh, sorry, so he, we are in front of the Lucky Heathen, mm -hmm. which is um, six. Can bring this back up? Uh, uh, VI, Roman numeral six, and he is heading north. Uh, no, that is not the Lucky Heathen. Oh my god, I'm, I'm terrible at this. Um, Lucky Heathen is 11, XI, this red one here. Got it. And so you guys are right outside there, and he's heading in this direction, like toward VII and II, the two and seven there. He's heading up that way. Okay. How far away is he? I mean, that's probably 200 feet. 200 feet. Oh, forgive me, friends. There is, there is one thing that I forgot to do. Get the conversation started. I'll join you shortly. And I'm gonna... Yeah, uh, cool. Actually, I'm gonna go... Fuck! Um, I'm gonna... Trying to keep an eye on him, I'm gonna head to Paramount Lodgings first. So I'm gonna the go opposite over, direction. I'm gonna go the opposite okay. direction. But as soon as I clock them, maybe going into the heathen, I'm gonna try to go. <laughs> um, you can get between the buildings and then go northwest behind the buildings, right? Yes, you can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> TC heads in the direction of Paramount Lodgings. Seems to have forgotten something. Um, all of you, give me an insight check. Oh. Bless, bless all of you. I bless you all. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, my oh, Bed. Baby. Bed. Twelve. Six. Five. Twelve. And as far as you can tell, TC, having scatterbrained that he is. Ooh. Goes back in the direction of Paramount <laughs> Lodgings, and he seems to be, he almost seems like he has to go to the bathroom, like he's moving very quick, like he's speed walking, <laughs> almost, in the direction of Paramount. And you guys, are you heading into uh, Lucky Heathen? Yeah. So, are we ready to regale them of our bravery, folks? Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> As you take a couple steps, you you see um, with a kind of a, a, a wooden slate that has some papers on it, you see Teddy Haas, the floor manager, who a couple of you he recognizes, sort of gives a wave, I think just Morna and, uh, and Doxley that he's seen before. He starts to shuffle in your direction. Outside, TC quickly kind of shuffling in the direction of Paramount. You give a quick look over your shoulder and you find that they've disappeared into the Lucky Heathen. Okay, I'm going. Um, so between the buildings? Yeah, and like, as quick as I can, without looking suspicious. Um, Don't yeah. be suspicious. And I wanna, I wanna make it back <laughs> up northwest. So when you go between uh, the, the buildings mm -hmm. and get into that sort of back alley area, what you find is that there are um, several goblins kind of moving to and fro. Because this right. is the area where that leads kind of back to the goblin yep. tents. So as you're moving quickly through, a number of sort of you get some excuse kind me. of suspicious looks. Excuse me. Just passing through, excuse me. And I'm trying to quickly get yeah, by. Quickly push in. Yeah. Give me a acrobatics check. Come on, buddy. You're from the speed of your 20. pursuit, dirty yeah. 20. A couple of goblins, they seem a little suspicious that you're kind of back here, and they kind of move to not like attack or do anything, but maybe just to sort of 
like inquire or prevent your, and the moment they kind of move, you sort of slip right by them <laughs> and you hear kind of a, like, where's he going? Like people sort of, where's he going? Where's he going? Like people just sort of wondering where you might be headed. Mm -hmm. You continue to shuffle along. You're moving along the ridge there on your right and a number of the houses on your left. And you're moving as quickly as you can and you're coming up on, you can see in front of you a whole row of these painted tents. And a couple times kind of goblins emerge. Sort of, some conversations happening. Where would you like to sort of pivot or emerge, or, wh or what would you like to do? So maybe you're building your two past the lucky heathen to get okay. back out into the street and just try to get eyes on that sack. Great. So yeah. after you get past what the lucky heathen's very easy to spot. It's one of the larger buildings on the block. It mm -hmm. has kind of a nice exterior that's clearly been built up. Mm -hmm. So as you turn to pivot, you th there's another one of these little alleys, kind of just like the one that Doxy went mm -hmm. through. There's a very thin alley, walkable but very narrow. Nobody in the way. And there is two goblins. One on like sitting on the shoulders of the other and they're <gasps> looking through the window <laughs> and they seem like they're trying to maybe catch a peek at what's happening inside here. How quickly can I run and jump over them? Uh, very quickly if you were able to vault. As... So they're looking into the lucky heat. Yes, like one on the shoulders of the other. <laughs> And from my knowledge of being in the building, are they looking into like a back room or are they just looking into the main? No, into the main hall. Yeah. I'm... Give me an acrobatics check. Come on, buddy. Uh, 15. 15. TC takes a running start, and just as the one, he looks towards you, sort of, I wasn't doing anything. Oh. And you <laughs> race myself on the wall and... Yeah, you put one foot on one wall and just kind of move nice. past, and you hear them sort of... <laughs> <laughs> return to the window, like obviously you weren't there to sort of reprimand them. You get back out into the thoroughfare, give me a perception check. Oh, come on. Get in there. Oh, come on, perceive. Oh, 25. 25. Wow. You take a quick look left, a quick look right, and with the big sack over his shoulder, he's going over the bridge on the northwest end of town. Uh, oh. Not A little less quick, but I'm, um, you know, Matching his speed a little faster. As the third, people are kind of coming in front of you, sort of push past, <gasps> good day to you, good day to you, sort of moving past each person. He gets over the other end of the bridge, and then he turns to the left, mm -hmm. and he enters past an iron fence into the kind of cemetery <gasps> area. Okay. Has what? The Is this the fuck? That's where, that's where I'm headed later tonight. Okay. Has the sack over his shoulder. So now he's in the cemetery, and mm -hmm. once you get over the bridge, there's a few people coming to and fro on the road, but the cemetery's pretty empty. So yeah. if you were to enter into the cemetery, it's pretty much just you. There's yep. no, there's not like the illusion of, oh, I'm just walking nope. through here. That's fine. So you watch him, the sort of thing over his shoulder. He opens the gate to the cemetery. Um, yeah, am I close enough to, am I there to? To what? What would you like to do? Yeah, am I, can I get to the door where he's still So yeah, at? he's walking through the cemetery. You get up to the gate of the cemetery. It's like a, yep. the most of the fence is like sort of chest high and then there's a larger gate that sort of opens that allows you inside. Oh. Uh, does he clock that noise? Does it seem like he... Um, 24. 24. Wow. Yeah. Okay, sort of, TC. With the squeaking of the gate. Ooh. Normally, so mission. the gate that has a natural, like when it opens, it squeaks, and then as it's slowly shutting, it squeaks. But it makes kind of a different noise because as you pull it open, it's faster than the sort of slow, methodical closing. Mm -hmm. And as you <laughs> open the gate, continues forward. I'll, I'll kind of get up to, to where he is there. He gets up to that one house, that sort of small building that's just, uh, it's a 16, XVI, yep, yeah. XVI, in the cemetery there, and he opens the door. Afternoon, inside. Pilgrim. <gasps> oh. Closes the door. The door. <gasps> You're probably 10 feet away. I'll go up. <gasps> Better knock on that door. Better. Looked like you were struggling a bit with your sack, sir, and just wondering if there was any way that I could help. 
one of the windows that has the curtains sort of drawn. Mm -hmm. sort of. You get a better look at the face. A short beard that in a couple patches has grown out in the way that like, for, it looks like someone who for a time maintained their beard quite sort of neatly, but now it's grown out just a little bit. It's a little, there's a couple kind of wiry sort of rogue strands of the beard. And as he's peeking out, he's even kind of like plucking at one sort of idly a little bit. You see sort of sunken eyes with a number of kind of lines underneath. And the hair kind of similar to his beard looks like it was once shaved, but is now just a little bit thicker on the top. And he has that low hat that you saw before that even though the day wasn't sunny, it sort of falls down over his face. And even indoors, he seems to be wearing this hat. Again, unusual. We may not have met face to face before. And I'll kind of genuflect a little bit. But I promise, I am here to help. Please. Goes back. Sometimes I'll just wait. TC. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> everyone. Who is this? Just, just a regular <laughs> human being. <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, wait. Totally unrecognizable. That's just how they talk in Tucson, Tucson Arizona. Arizona. Uh, <laughs> what? He's wearing a wig. Wait, but you said pilgrim. What the yeah, fuck? What, you, what does that mean? <laughs> human oh, that is where we are going to pick it up uh, next yeesh. week. Uh, we had a lot of separate business to take care of, now mostly reconvened here, as uh, we're going to hear what the Monteros have to say. Montero's apparently very interested in uh, cleric-related incidents in the cusp. So they're looking to hear the story and maybe uh, maybe provide some free lunch. Be interesting. That might have been made up. Giving us <laughs> a no, 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 no. Yeah. I asked. <laughs> I think Clement, you? Yes, right? I, I asked. Well, Montero's gonna be like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Got some peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's oh where we're gonna pick it up. Oh uh, what is going geez. on? Ooh. Wow. Um, what? Um, before we sign off, um, people who are watching on TikTok, if you want to watch the old episodes, uh, like the last six ones, uh, all of those are on uh, YouTube. Um, and anybody who wants to come and join the Discord, Pokodoko should be making a little channel that you can talk about this uh, episode specifically. You don't have to worry about. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <laughs> Poor oh. Ah! Don't. Um, Continue, please. Oh my god! I still don't talk. It's worse. Um, if you were watching on YouTube, like and subscribe and comment on the video and share it with your friends and tell everybody about it because this. It's getting juicy. It oh my god, it's the fingers. Oh, the They're fingers so are very so creepy. Fuzzy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you guys so, so much. Um, we learned quite a bit about Morna, and we got a little. Uh, the door's been cracked open over at Maeve Crittenden's if you're willing to uh, defile a grave. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> I will do anything. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, oh, and before uh, I forget, uh, uh, Cave on Clave, resubscribe. Hello, thank you. Hey, very thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll be back at the same time next week, um, and we will pick up right where we left off. Uh, everybody have a wonderful Halloween. Yes. Yes. But, uh, we hope that your Happy costumes Halloween. are not as sweaty as ours, but if they are, uh, have fun anyway. Um, I'm deeply disappointed that uh, the bees did not visit the apiary in this episode. Uh, oh <laughs> wow. my god. Yeah. That's where Haskell's <laughs> is. Huge missed opportunity. See who brings well, in more honey. Were, people, you weren't wearing a. Man. Oh god. Oh yeah, sorry. It's you weren't all wearing a costume and people were like, who's the guy between the bees? And I was like, he's our apiarist. <laughs> yes. That's me. <laughs> That's all I had. Aww. Uh, yeah, so a few leads, various uh, things. Um, 
Daphne has given Kate a few sort of options to yeah. proceed, and uh, all making condemn. the reluctant yeah. help of of Josie, who sees Morna's strife, oh. but is also uh, at this point. Um, so yeah, a lot a lot to happen, and and we will obviously um, see where TC has gotten himself to in the nowhere. Just hang, just day. hanging out. Just, <laughs> I'm just hanging out. I had to run to the hotel to get my. Oh, balls. My balls. <laughs> <laughs> Got my balls. Come, as you do. <laughs> uh, I left them in my boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> I keep a likeness of them in my boudoir. Um, awesome. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yay. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Sunday. Oh, and, and next Sunday is the uh, uh, Notch and Soda, I think. I think it's soda already been, oh, it's already been four Wow, episodes. Which is subscriber only on Twitch and YouTube member only uh-huh. and, and a premium top notch s- Patreon yes. and subscriber to Spotify. Oh, so a lot of options. A lot of ways to support. Yeah, so you better support. Something tells me show. there's going to be quite a lot to discuss after next oh episode. My oh, oh my god, god. yes. There's so much to digest yeah. with you guys. Here we go. Um, and, uh, oh my and god. Maybe god. someone will snap Ilian out of his, his, oh, his funk. I'm going to whine and dine and have <laughs> oh, no. He knocks on the door of TC's room to like go to dinner and he's just like It's Sokka uh, in the tent. Yeah. 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 With the rose. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, All right everybody. We'll see you next week. Have a wonderful week. Bye. 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 Bye.